Remember the Kogor magic stone? It created a gap in the rift of worlds, bringing a great worldly disaster, putting everyone in danger. Slowly, this magic stone's existence has been forgotten, yet it still exists somewhere in the world. Danger still lurks, It is still persistent. And now, another terrifying disaster is coming to Sky Island. To overcome this disaster, we need professionals. Those who are well versed in monsters. At this time, Siri was busy hunting down a monster. However, it was nowhere to be seen. Only traces of powerful magic lingered. Siri could not shake this uneasy feeling. So, she sought out Yennefer's expertise. Realizing that a foreboding problem had arisen, they turned to people they could trust, and came together to face the danger. 
they are now ready to embark on a new journey. The Monster Slayers are returning once again.
Hello everyone and welcome to the 2024 America Summit in the first monthly trial. My name is Evan and with me today it's Stoic. What's up Stoic? What's going on Evan? Look at this. This is not SWC. This is the wait, America wait, Summit wait. that we're here. Did you? I didn't plan this. Did you plan this? I didn't plan it. You, you saw me wearing this. <laughs> oh, we've been good. summoned apparently uh, we've all been summoned chat i'm glad you've been summoned too let's say hi to folks i see say shizo in there ari's here jug is here this place is stacked i'm so glad you guys could make it again we're here for the very first monthly trial of 2024 america's limit we've got a lot of games ahead of us today we got eight people who got the most points in the goodwill lobbies leading up to this and now they're fighting for summoner points they're going to carry over to the finals it's going to see who gets taken to Los Angeles for the finals in a few months. This is pretty exciting, Stoic. It is very, very exciting. We've got some returning players. Obviously, Thompson winning Summit last year. He's going to be back, trying his best, getting some summoner's points under his belt, of course. I think Truo's in there competing. And we have some missing people that we didn't see last year here. But, you know, hey, that's all about the Summit. We want to see new faces. We want to see some up-and-comings. We want to see not necessarily SWC players all the time. But you know what? SWC players are going to show up. They're going to get dedicated to the game. They're going to try, try and compete. In America's coming here, and I, and, I, and I think that's great. It's still great to see these players coming in here and uh, trying their best. Oh yeah, and we, like you said, we got a lot of very well-known names. I mean, we got Thompson in here, we got Topa in here. It's a pretty stacked bracket, guys. Uh, so I'm really glad everybody could make it. Oh, present, you're so funny. <laughs> these are our commentators. Here's the leaderboard that we're going to be populating over the course of today too, and it also tells you what point totals each place is going to take home with them today. Now, please note that even the person who comes in eighth place, there are ways for them to accumulate points outside of the monthly trials. So just because you don't necessarily finish towards the top end of the tournament bracket today, you can still accumulate enough points to potentially go and compete in LA. That is right. I mean, it's all about making it out to the monthly. Once you achieve those points by playing in on those Wednesdays all month, you got to get yourself into the monthly trials. That's the goal. You need to get in here and you need to accumulate as many points as you can get now inside these monthly trials. So any victories you guys see today is going to be summoner's points awarded to said player. Yeah, and then there's going to be some prizes on the line too. There's over $4,000 worth of prize pool there. And today too, they'll get a few hundred dollars just for playing and participating in the monthly trial, which is great. I think first place is getting 300, second 200, and then there's merch options available uh, for third and fourth as well. Dude, Ari, Ari's with the hype right now. Let's take a look at the bracket that we're going to be playing through today. Uh, this is going to be best of three all the way th all the way through for those watching at home. Starting off with Thompson and Topa V, then Lana and Lightning, Zelda and Zazos, and then True Whale and Crocodile before we get into our tie-breaking loser's bracket. I know, starting off real spicy, Thompson and Topa V. Now, these two players actually had to do a round robin because, I don't know if you heard, Evan, but we had a tie in the fourth place spot, and that was with uh, Unentitled, Sarah, uh, Thompson, and Topa V. So those guys actually had to play, or those three players had to play during the week. Got that round robin figured out here. And we now have Thompson and actually Topa V that made it out of that round robin because someone did choose to, to step down. Um, so we'll see what happens uh, throughout because the person that did step down, they can still play in the summit, but uh, they chose not to play tonight. Right, and I'm really glad that you brought that up too because those were the games that we were seeing when we had about like five minutes left before we actually went live with the with the tournament. We were checking out the tie-breaking round. So if anybody was curious to see the replays for those, that's what we were saying. And here's the, the tie-breaking rounds that are going to be populated over the course of the day. We'll be coming to this one after the first round of matches, by the way. That's when we're first going to dip into the bottom bracket to figure out these tie-breaking games. I don't know, man. Which one are you looking forward to the most? I, we're starting out with a banger between Topa V and Thompson. I mean, those are two of my favorite players in Summoner's War. Like, if I had trading cards, I'd want, like, both of those in first edition. Uh, yeah, I'm just, right. I'm a big dude, fan of Topa over the years. I mean, watching Topa play, watching Topa stream has been, uh, been has been just, like, something I, I feel like I've always done. I've always supported this guy. He's been one of my favorite players. I always consider Topa V to be, like, one of those, like, almost like all-star players out there where it didn't matter the play style he was still able to perform it and, and do well you know i've seen him you know kind of in, in the similar situation to, to pink Roy, where i watch pink Roy, he plays on so many different play styles all the time and topa v did the exact same thing and they're they're both these players are so 
Uh, it, it doesn't matter what it is, they're able to produce victories out of uh, different levels of rune quality, different setup with units, and I, I put Topa V, I really do, I put him on a, on a high pedestal, so I am expecting to see Topa V, well, Topa v do well today, but then there's my other favorite, like, you know, big fan of Thompson, and I really hope Thompson does well as, as well, because he was here last year, and he, he did win uh, America's uh, Summit last year. Yeah, that's right. Call back to 2023. Thompson took it home then. And like Jug pointed out in the chat, it's like Thompson forgets that he has RGB units ruined, man. Like that was an all LD <laughs> draft. I can't wait to see what he brings to the table. Topa too. I have so many good memories of Topa V, like playing just these super hard control teams. Like I, I just, I remember him like reigning in the days of like Ganythor actually too. I, I, so whenever I think of Topa, I think of Ganythor. You can make of that what you will. If that's a compliment or what, you know, I think it's great. I think it's good times long past. So we're going to start off with a super stellar game and I can't wait to see it. Um, I hope you guys are all excited in chat. Let me know who you're rooting for too. Oh, I see King Ari. Ari, I'm a huge fan of Thompson, says Ari. That's no surprise. That's no <laughs> Imagine if she wasn't. Oh, I'd be so disappointed in you, Ari, but she's too big of a fan. Um, this is going to be a great match. I really do. I look forward to seeing what's going to be happening here. Uh, I know... You know, maybe not everybody's been up to date with uh, with Topa V's picture, but Topa V's got some absolute banger of units now. So we could be seeing all sorts of things happening right here. What's he What's he pulled recently, Stark? Not too recently. I know I know he has jumped on the Ragdoll train. So we're seeing lots of Ragdoll now coming out of Topa V. A lot of turn two play coming out of him as well. So we'll see what happens because we know Tom's oh, going to be great. very fast, demanding that turn one play style. So we'll see. He's got the first pick here. Pre-bans locked in. Segment Han. Let's get into it. Yeah, let's see what's going on. These pre-bans are awfully speedy, man. They're both going... Oh, look at that. Right when we called it. I, what was the last question I asked you before we went live story? I was like, what, what, what non <laughs> Yeah, non-LD unit here. And I was like, yeah, it's probably like an Oliver. Yeah, 33 speed lead unit. <laughs> there it is. So I'm expecting all LDs from, from here out. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be full LD draft. Like we'll we'll probably see we'll see Laura. We'll see, uh, oh God, any anyone. He was using the light Hollyberry cookie, which was kind of cool too. Yes, yeah, that's been a very very popular unit for him. To no surprise to see a 33 speed lead being paired up with a 120 base speed unit like this Laura. And another fast unit too, uh, Water Thick Boy. He's got a name that I struggle to pronounce all the time. Jog 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 Joganam. Jongnam. Jongnam. Jo Something like that. Water Thick Boy. Uh, he's in here. Water and like I said, <laughs> We've got Topi <laughs> drafting Ragdoll Masha. You know, to no surprise, see Ragdoll hit the fields here. A lot of AoE units. Ragdoll's able to capitalize off that kind of stuff here. Into a Juno and Gyo. Oh, dude, you will know her name. Gyo is just one of those monsters where you just like... You just think that you can handle her, and all of a sudden she's lapping you. She's gotten so much attack bar from you using skills. She's stunning you. She's got karma on you. It's just the worst. It's very oh, annoying. Oh, no way. <laughs> oh, let's go. Let's Thompson's go. taking an Ada in here. Uh, I appreciate the Ada pick. I'm always not a big fan of Ada in, in any tournament bracket. But you know what? This is the first match. If there was a time to take an L, now's that time to take an L. <laughs> but I will see what happens. <laughs> You're so hard on Arda Rand <laughs> all the time. Oh, man. Reek is an excellent pick here, but I feel like this Reek could come to the field. We might be looking at a, um, a light cookie ban, potentially. I I wouldn't necessarily doubt. We know the, the, the art is not. The art is not getting banned. Yeah, Ad is going through here, uh, 100%. I know we've got three units that you can pretty much guarantee to create the Masha Ragdoll Juno. So, Ada will do. You know, hey, you know what? Ada could win this whole thing right here. Who am I kidding? It's all a change in perspective that you need, Stoic. Like, the, the Arda and the Rag, we need to get you in positive favor with them again. Ooh, so Laura's going to get the ban here. And the Geo. Geo's such a troublesome unit, man. That can can really get out of hand. So some no surprise to see that getting banned out here. But a 33 speed lead for Thompson. Got a crit rate lead coming out for Topa V. Let's see what happens. A crit rate lead against an Artemiel? <laughs> Let's, uh oh. <laughs> get a lot of revenges. Uh, I'm about to eat my words here. We'll see what happens with that. Because that uh, he could, he could, could be the unit to close it out here, especially with the crit rate lead. Everything's going to be critting. Yeah, he might be able to cook a little bit here. Uh, let's see what happens. We actually got the Jung Soul, Jung Nam. Excuse me, we got the Jung Nam kicking us off. Let's just combine two of their names. The Jung Nam kicking us off. Got the increased know, cooldown time, damage. but none of the attack bar. Yeah, yeah, none of the attack bar. But um, oh, from Oliver under the Juno, none of the attack bar there, indeed. Um, that was crazy damage coming out of uh, Water Thick Boy on Rika. Yeah, that was actually... You don't want to turn your nose up at that kind of damage. He hit, he hit her for like 33% right there. 
definitely. Oh, look at that strip despair stun. Am I am I eating my words already? Dude, I think so. I actually think that like between the crit rate lead and the Juno, some of these monsters, I think Art is actually pretty decent here. The only thing that makes me a little concerned is that there's no uh, there's no real cleanse available to get rid of the dots oh. given by the Rika. Look at this. Is he three for three right now, or am I miscounting? Uh, he's doing well. <laughs> yeah, he's doing well. He's doing pretty well. We chat. We can agree, right? He's doing pretty well. Yeah, some good damage. Was that 5.7k on the revenge? Not bad. Rika's got one foot in the grave, and I, someone's gonna put the other half in there. I know that light could nice be little, too. Yeah, nice little despair stun slowing down Ada from you know all the chaos that was ensuing here. Uh oh. So it's about right now when we start realizing that these dots have actually done a lot of damage. Like Rika's. Rika's kind of got everybody on fire right now. So there is an opportunity for Topa to take this. Well, that third skill coming out of, um, dang it, Jog, Jog Nam. Is that right? Jog, Jog Nam? Jong Nam. Jong Nam. Uh, third skill heals him, so you can see how much that... He was supposed to take a lot of damage, then didn't really take the damage and healed up from it. Despair. Though. Yeah, they say she's those right, dude. That's a good call. Despair is probably, like, the MVP right now. <laughs> yeah, I think this is going to be it for this light. Honestly, I think he capitalized on it. Like, the dots? Is, is the dots enough? You know, I'd hate to see the dots not be enough. I think Topa has to go and finish off this, uh, like, cookie, though. But I can... But I'm... Uh, legitimately, I gamble with dots in a way that people shouldn't. Like, I, I really do think that's 20, though. Right? Yeah, let's see what yeah, that's here. So he is going for it. So he does confirm kill on top of the Ada. So here is where I was actually kind of hoping that Topa B did capitalize on the light cookie. I think that you should have tried to drop that unit. Um, it, it was close enough. Obviously, the heal came out, saving the cookie. Cookie's gonna stay alive just a little bit longer. We need the spare stuns to come out from this Juno. Juno did get one, though. One crucial one. And Rika's trying her best to kind of lock down the other units, but, like, Arda's gonna stay up and stay revenging. We might be in a world right now where our Tamil is the thing that makes the difference. I mean, you have to dismount the, uh, the Masha, but you also have to kill the Rika. So it's like, alright, so we went for the kill on the Rika, and now we have a little bit healed up here on this Masha, that's gonna be it for the Juno. Ju Masha ends up right here. The defense break has to. That needs to be the move. And he stays alive! Gets the dismount! That's wild, dude. As soon as... Now, Jongnam might solo this. Jongnam can solo this. This is a pretty crazy unit. And uh, very... Uh, uh, luck not lucky that this unit is up here, but we've got great skills to, to solo out here against Topa B. We'll see what happens. I was going to say, I think Topa just needs some violent procs to capitalize on this unit here, but Jognam is going to be healing with this third skill that comes up next turn. Oh, and he didn't get the freeze! Does get the stun, though, which is really nice. Goes for a second skill. Brandon gets applied here with the additional turn. Does he land the freeze, though? Gets the freeze! There's the additional turn! Can he finish him? That's the dot! Oh, there it is! Oh my god, oh, Gets round one from top! You know what? If maybe, maybe another unit that wasn't Ada. I'm just, you know, in a world of, uh, <laughs> in a world of another, like I said, like I said, it's a best of three. It's a best of three. So if there was a time to draft out of that, that was the uh, that was the opportunity. Arda, was, <laughs> you're so funny, dude. Arda was not was not the difference maker there. He he did great. Saying holds holds water for sure. Like, I think he had what it took. It just kind of was a tough like. It was a tough situation at the end. You were stuck between a dot and a hard place. You know, like. Yeah, most Sorry. definitely. I think this is a great call by Topavi, taking that Oliver away, locking the 33 speed lead here. I think this might even potentially change the pace of of Thompson's draft, or we might see some speed contents. Sleep. Yeah, let's see. Oh. Looks like he's presenting another speed lead. Doesn't match, but throws down a CR on a Zabala. That's kind of cool. He can go for more control, splashing more, and CR has seen a lot more play ever since she appeared in a semi-recent balance patch. Oh. Exactly. Uh, Ciara's definitely seen a lot more play with that third skill here. Um, so, speed leads for both teams. Topa V definitely not showing. He's slowing down right now. I love the take on that Jognam. Obviously, segment popping up here. Now, my, my question is, I don't. I feel like I haven't seen Topa um, play this, this segment in a minute. Uh, this could potentially be a despair segment. A lot of people are ruining this unit uh, on despair. Oh, interesting. This is like Grand Theft Monster. Both these players are under arrest. <laughs> taking, taking each other's monsters left and right. Got the Masha take, Oliver, Jongnam. Everybody's a traitor. So the Masha take here is definitely in response to like a Juno. I think...
Thompson's expecting Topa V to take the Juno here, and Masha is just one of those units that are just, it's meant to counter the Juno, it feels. Yeah, I think you're right. Juno would really be great given what's being presented on the other side, you know, with the oh, kids. I love it. Oh, dude, the Smicer. Oh, He's just it. playing with us. Oh, oh, I love the Smicer. The, so Smicer, I think, is in a really, really good place right now. Still an RNG unit. You're you're really relying on the third skill to strip an attack bar pushback. There's still a chance to resist that nothing nothing can happen from the Smicer, but um, ah, it would have been exciting to see the Smicer. So there's not a lot of strip <laughs> for uh, for Thompson's side, and we've got immunity. So whatever he's whatever Thompson's got to do, he has to do it in the window. Can he move before Musa moves? That's the main question here, because once Musa gets shields up and immunity up, it's going to be a little hard. The only thing that can kind of throw a wrench into that immunity with Musa is actually the Oliver, because he's he's going to cycle out of the immunity way faster than your average bear. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think the third skill honestly has to happen to get the immunity back. Oh no, because he's got the Wusa falling up here, so we didn't need to uh, worry about that. So there's your three-turn immunity, exactly like you said. This is this is a little tough. This definitely puts Thompson in a pickle here. Yeah, there's going to be more than a few awkward turns. So now we've got Thompson in this position where he's just got to like kind of buy time and not die. And you hate procs like that right now, right? Like you'd rather not proc until the moment the moment actually matters. Like that contributed very little. And now his proc chance is, in theory, down. Yeah, definitely. I think Thompson will be losing this CR very early into this match. Thick Boy is going to be taking an initial turn here. Oh, dude, this is tough. Oh, right, Geki. Dude, said not a lot of strip. Evan meant zero strip. I was trying to be trying to be <laughs> nice. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I was trying to like be nice about it. But yeah, there's no strip here, like at all. It's really tough. I would just so what's crazy about skill. the uh, Shizuka Wusa, both these units on the field here, Shizuki gets to use that second skill, kind of like a pseudo ventilate going on to the Wusa. If this Wusa probably is unviolent because it was on the slower side of things, one proc from Wusa, that's three turn shields all over again. Keep in mind, yeah. Shizuka has third skill. That's more shields, more immunity. It's more There's shields just and more immunity. Light oh, and can even do. That was honestly oh, that was pretty bold. Cool. Yep. That was pretty bold, Stoic, not using the skill 3, because that there's competitive summoner's war and you want that fix, like, it's gonna be here. And if you're competing in it too, you can join in those Goodwill lobbies weekly leading up to these things. Uh, so talking about the games there, Stoic, so like, I think we can kind of see what happened in that last one, but like, you know, we kind of need a, just a little bit more strip to get that online. What did you think about that last match? Uh, I mean, that's exactly what it was, is we had a lack of strip to have, uh, on a field where you were taking a light monkey king and um, um, there was one other unit that he really needed to not have uh, the beneficial effects up there. I, I forget what was right next to the light monkey king. There was a Kitian to Shang. There was, oh, dude, I forget. I forget uh, the other uh, one. Zibala, we'll see in the Zibala. replay in a second here, actually. Yeah, yeah, we're going to see the replays in a second for sure. But the, the Zabala and the Light Monkey King really needed a form of strip to be in front of them. So to speed lead for kind of set himself up to, to, to succeed against all that immunity that, that Shizuka was in that, that second match here. Um, uh, uh, but I mean, I, I, I personally haven't, I know what happened in this first match. Uh, <laughs> oh, it was, you're going to say it was the art of pick. <laughs> uh, you know, he looks great in that nice little suit. It's an awesome looking transmog. Uh, that's great. Um, I think it should have been anything else. <laughs> <laughs> literally anything else i love the business casual artist kid too i think that's great i liked the artemio i i'm trying to think what i would have adjusted here you know i i actually i like the draft for the most part i think at that point i probably just would have liked uh even like a a riley or a healer or something so, something to cleanse anything anything really i wanted something to remove the dots yeah. So in this match right here, we're seeing Jogmam just have his way, to be honest, because th there's no protection with the Jogmam. And then at the same time, Topi has all the protection in the world and sustained Wusa's second skill. Jogmam's got his third skill, all the immunity in the world, even with the Shizuka second skill to revive something back and, and do whatever you have it with, you know? It's exactly. Topi did well yeah. in that, that second round. You know what would have been great there, Stoic, is a Juno. Like, Juno's just so good in that situation up against the Shizuka. You know, you're, you're there to cleanse whatever she puts on you, but you can also remove the buffs that she puts on. Um, he definitely had a game plan in mind, but I think it might have been tunnel vision just a little bit into that crowd control and forgot 
the facilitator for it. I think that's ultimately what yep. kind of happened there. Great gameplay from both players. The next one is going to be Lana and Lightning coming up here. Uh, have you gotten the chance to watch these players play in the America Summit leading up to this? No, because that was the Latin American side, so I didn't get to watch too much of it, but I know for everybody that was watching uh, Managua and Mr. Sloth, they got to showcase everything that was going on in the Latin side, the Latin lobby. Uh, I did not have a chance to go see anything in there. I was only able to see all the, uh, the, the scoring after that and see how uh, it progressed throughout the weeks of the summit, you know, everybody moving up and down the, the leaderboard. So that was it. So we're, we've got a treat ahead of us here, Evan, because we both have no information on these two players here because we it's gonna, it's gonna to be a play. fun time it's gonna be a fun time and yeah this is a great time to tell people too that the whole premise of the america summit is to find the best players in the americas so like this is like the best in the west like that's where it is oh sabi behi lana versus lightning super interesting too because lightning if that's a if that's like a legitimate c3 that this yeah. is what the summit's about you know what I mean? This is what it's about. We've got a G3 versus a th C3. And if Lightning has been, you know, playing his Donis to, to get where he's at, like good on this person to make it into the tournament and to be here at his rank. This is this is a prime example of anybody who wants to compete in Summoner's War, the summit was the place for you. And you can still yes. sign up now to be there and, and compete just like Lightning is right now. Yes, you can. So if you guys want to be a part of this moment in 2024 at Summoner's War history, you can sign up and compete in the same ways that we were talking about in those Goodwill lobbies. And that's a great transition into talking about how since these players have been trying to farm wins in those lobbies, that kind of lends itself to more of a fast, cleave-like play style. Now you're going to be seeing what these players are really comfortable with now that they can kind of take their time at the monthly trials. Most definitely. We have an interesting draft here with Lana opening up with the Ganymede Shizuka, which is very strange, but it's like you got that pseudo ventilate, actual ventilate into a Cassandra. So I kind of want to see one more damage dealer coming out of Lana, something that deals a lot of damage. So you can kind of capitalize on all of that skill cooldown, and you're not left with one damage dealer that needs to wait around for that second skill to come back here. Um, so if there was an Oberon, a world that Alana has an Oberon, I think I'd like to see the Oberon, but we're gonna see a, a Wada Demon come out here. And I think that's a pretty solid unit. I think Lightning is kind of prepared for this right now with the Akroma and Camilla. Yeah, this is a, a really dope draft from Lana. Super aggressive, like, I'm going to snipe you and then I'm going to find a way to do either a full ventilate or a pseudo ventilate through through Shizuka, like you said. And Lightning with the first pick of Chroma is like really telling. Like it almost makes me feel like maybe they've encountered each other before or something. You know, like that's a that's an abnormal unit to pick first. Yeah, I'm also debating if uh, we we're missing some will runes. We are missing a lot of will runes on the side of Lightning, which may have justified the ban on top of the Ganymede. You know, Swift Ganymede with a third skill opening up and reducing all of attack bar would have been kind of crazy to stat that match there, because uh, the only unit that had will up was that Wusa. Yeah, so let's see what can be done here, because we know that Wusa is going to move in between. That was a really good move. That was that was kind of cute to just kind of wake up the Juno, so that way she loses. Uh, she loses the speed buff to, to the strip and like she doesn't heal anybody like that was kind of cool Yeah, let's see what happens because I do think like Cassandra can cause a little bit of chaos oh. This Juno can go missing very quickly because of uh, this Cassandra But I do think Camilla and Akroma these are gonna be some pesky units Evan Yeah, and no um, Didn't put the silence on it, it chose to go for the skill two on the Shizuka instead of the water demon Oh, big loss on the Juno so early, but we knew that Cassandra was going to take someone down. You're going to lose a unit to this comp. That's just how it goes. Exactly, and it was, it was definitely going to be that Juno first here, and obviously Juno being gone on the field, you feel a lot more comfortable with your Shizuka's third skill. You know, you know, you know for a fact there's no healing going to be coming out from, from Juno, and then Juno able to really pop off getting the speed buff so consistently with a unit like that on the other side of the field, but we'll see what happens because we've got a G3 versus a C3. Like, this is still very exciting it's awesome to see lightning you know currently doing well in my eyes yeah i agree i agree i think lightning's doing great in this matchup so far um it was great to kill the juno too imagine this whole side filled with dots right now that's what would be happening right now if juno was still with us so luckily for lana she is not we haven't seen the demon take a turn yet so he's still sitting on skills too yep that's right i think he still needs to stay on top of the cassandra get it dropped he did get a drop, looking for a freeze. No freeze, but the additional turn, you gotta keep pressing the Shizuka. You gotta stay on the Shizuka, 100%. 
Oh, that damage. That's a lot of damage. Oh my He's goodness. Got Good. He's got his damage. He's got his damage. Does he get the silence? Gets the glancing. No silence popping out here. The heal comes out to save the day. Wow. Oh my goodness, man. This Chizuka is resisting everything that matters. And that's pretty incredible. Oh, do you just go for like, do you, do you just use it? Oh, he doesn't want to use it. I wanted to use it on like Camilla, but I'm, I'm, I'm aggressive. I also don't play with these elites, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think the water demon is going to finish off this, uh, the rest of lightning's draft here. I, I think if um, Lightning had got rid of the Shizuka, I think I'd be very comfortable with saying Lightning's in great positioning to finish off these two. Let's keep in mind, like, obviously when we're looking at a G3 versus a C3, usually which, what comes with these ranks is a certain rune quality behind these units because we saw Praha was putting in some serious numbers with the additional damage, skill ones. Obviously the Water Demon was putting in some really great numbers as well. Uh, Akroma's known to be very, very tanky in like the G3 ranks. So again, when we're talking about uh, G3 to C3, maybe the Akroma might not be where it needed to be going up against a unit like this Water Demon. So, you know, those could be the reason behind where we're at right now. You know what this, this Camilla is ruined on, Stoic? It's optimism. It's optimism, Evan. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Every Camilla oh, is <laughs> optimism. <laughs> oh, that's just how it goes. You don't you don't scoop until the Camilla is dead. You know that's that's just yeah. how it is. Surprisingly, I love only the second man. skill two. Only the second skill two we've seen from the demon this game, by the way. That's true. Yeah. Nice little two turn sleep. But we got the additional damage pumping through. Uh, two point. 1k, let's remember that number, because that's a pretty strong hitting uh, Praha. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we had some uh, some people calling out the runes and the artifact power coming from uh, coming from Lana, and it's definitely apparent. I think that Lightning did a pretty stellar job holding, holding their own there, though. 100% agree with you. Obviously, Shizuka resisted a lot. Shizuka is known to be rune on max resistance, so uh, it, it really... Max resistance really does show itself. Um, when there might be a lack of accuracy on one side of the field. Uh, like, we don't, we know for a fact, Akroma needs a ton of rune quality. Camilla needs some good rune quality under her as well. So to, to sacrifice uh, damage and tankiness for accuracy, like, not a lot of people are, are taking that jump. Um, and we were missing the freezes, we were missing the silences, all those things that could have landed on the Shizuka, I think would have turned the table where Lightning would have been potentially in a position to uh, take a match away from Lana here. So true, man. Yeah, it's definitely a combination of things, right? Like like you said, Camilla does not have a lot of accuracy traditionally. I loved seeing the Shizuka on, on high res. Like, it really made the difference a few times. I think it's uh, it, it can be an underrated stat at times, you know, or, you know, some people will say that it's uh, not a real stat. It is definitely real. <laughs> it can it's be very, real. very real. And same with that resistance, man. Resistance accuracy can be all too, too real. Oh, look at this. We got, we've got like a very, very defensive draft coming from Lightning. Like, you know, Annabelle can yeah. put out some power, but like there's a very defensive, like I don't want to get sniped kind of draft. Yeah. The scene, the Nana definitely claims like he thinks he's losing something. Anybody drafting a Nana, especially where, where in Lightning's position, um, it, it to me that says like the Viva's going through, the Molong's going through, and he's accepting he that something's going to be lost. Could do a Bulwark here if he wanted. There's a lot of buffs on both sides. Oh, dude, the Fang. I think I think Fang's a, a great draft. Um, I feel like we're not taking advantage completely of, of Feng Yen, but you also look on the other side of the field. Feng Yen is going to be a problem for, for Lightning because one of his units are that, that will do the damage to take care of the Feng is a Diana, and I don't see the Diana going through. Yeah, no way. The Diana was going to tear up this draft. That was a great ban, honestly. Yep. And so taking Molong out the Molong, the too. Yeah, exactly. We, we saw him prepping to not get sniped. You take out the snipe, there's no sniping. That is true, but we have a uh, Viva Stow. Uh, Viva, Viva Still? Viva Chill? We have a Viva Still? Uh, uh, Viva's one of those units that makes it feel like it's going to be a snipe. It does. Like, I'm not used to seeing this unit outside of, like, a Leo Ragdoll situation. You know, or something to facilitate a turn one snipe. 
Same, I thought that's what we were going to be seeing was potentially a Leo or a Ragdoll, if Lana has a Ragdoll in the house here. Um, oh man, these additional turns are really mean. Look at the, what was that, 4.4, 4.5k? Is that what we were seeing out of the Feng Yen? Yeah, it was a lot oh, of damage, damage, man. Like that, that Nana is now about to be down a Soul Shard. That's a lot. Do you, Stoic, do you reckon that Viva is probably the best LD5 you could pull right now? <laughs> for me, potentially, for uh, I, I think for Viva's you. is a very, very good unit right now. Um, brings like high volatility, high threat, and, and it really makes you think of a draft and kind of puts you in a position of like whatever you had in store, you may have to like change according just because of Viva Chill. Yeah. So we're getting into the mid game of this match right now. This is exactly the play pattern that we were expecting to see, right? Lana's going to chip away at the Nana just to get rid of that Soul Shard. And as soon as Nana's off the table, all you got to do is take down one of the sources of damage, by which I mean either a Chroma or technically Annabelle with the. Oh my word, dude. No way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah no you just way. don't see that enough. Uh, two turn sleep on a more than likely max resistance uh, Annabelle from a probably very low accuracy Wusa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's one of those skills that I talk about a lot because you never see a Wusa land a two turn sleep for you when you're behind. It's only ever when you're ahead. It, it's just a, a, a kick while you're down. And it's always the max resistance unit. Like, whatever it is, it's just like you're not going to get this two turn sleep. Gets the two turn sleep. Whoa, she always dodges the debuff that matters, Stoic. I, a, that's a smart Shizuka, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's a really smart Shizuka. That's great. Here we go. This is going to be a big all things. Never mind. It, for, well, that's for us, it's big. huge. Look at this. For this side, well, it's pretty huge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. For this side, it's, it's massive, especially where there's no strip here. I, it's like, where, where's the Juno Praha now? It would have been great to, to strip all of that. Yeah, and it's like, look at this. No matter who you hit, you're going to get counterattack. This is looking pretty steady. The fortress is online for Lana. I know. Well, light Lightning's also looking really healthy right now, but the problem is, like, how are you going to deal with this Fang Yen? Especially with all that sustain, all that healing, all the shields, all the buffs that Lana's able to get. Like, Fang Yen, it's another problem unit. Yeah, I don't. I, are, are Chromas ruined on Optimism? as well or is it just camilla uh, uh, no honestly it's just camilla camilla's got way too much sustain for her um i, I ruin uh a chroma on hopes and dreams yes i agree <laughs> hopes and dreams. i love one we get but i too would here. ruin my own the point of the game where like oh? a chroma oh a chroma could take somebody out so we we've got wusa coming back here a crow i mean there's there's a little bit of life here because we've got a, oh, I mean, that, it's a it's a fine additional turn. He's going to get second skill back up. He's got to take out the Akroma. Chroma does come back here. So if we get a Violent proc out of Riley here, oh, we don't. But we do have Annabelle's second skill coming. Hmm. <laughs> that was the clutchest time oh. for Vivitel to get the immunity and heal the Wusa. That dodged a three-turn defense break from Annabelle. That was actually so important that she did that. Yeah, this is uh. Man, it, it, I feel like any Violent Proc coming out of Lightning at a opportune time here, going up against Lana when these units get low, is just what what Lightning needs to see. That's what he really needs to take advantage of. He needs to try and take advantage of it. It's, it's so tough to make yourself proc in those situations. But if he had proc there, I think he was able to get rid of the Wu, so, uh and that needs to happen. Yes, and right now, we like looking at the, the game, we're at parity, but when you start thinking ahead a little bit, how does that comp deal with Feng Yan? That's the main thing. It, it involves Annabelle landing a three-turn defense break, and then, like, you know, Fang not Fang, Fang's going to cleanse it. Like, Fang is built to decimate teams like this. So that's the main concern here. Yeah, look at the... Oh, honestly, I was like, do we, do we third? I feel like that was a situation of where... We should have third with the We're Viva, because then we had um, we, skills on cooldown. The heal was on cooldown, and then we've got Feng Yen to capitalize on the pretty much dead Chroma. I know it would come back, but like, I, I feel like that was a play. He's still, he's got all the time in the world to to make that play still. Yeah, he was thinking about doing a second skill there. I I don't know if I would do second skill just yet because there's no point in them using AOEs at this point. Is there a good? You could Viva the the Riley here. Actually, you could give Riley the give yeah, Riley the switch. There you go. 
Yeah, Riley doesn't there have any skills right now. First skill does heal up. All things. Goes to the defense break. He needs a defense. No defense break landing on the Riley. All, all things everywhere all at once, baby. Yeah, not enough, though. I think Lana was hoping for a bit more defense breaks uh, across the board here. Um, which did not happen. I think he has to keep forcing it. No, he goes and swaps to the Nana. He's got such great damage, though. Yeah, he does. Can... Oh, Shizuka Wait, I think can he take brings it, the Wusa but... back. I think he should bring the Wusa back. Second skill. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, All right. I, I'm kind of with you there. I think he should bring... Oh, actually, but if Shizuka's going to go, she's going to come back from the Soul Protect. Maybe what should have happened is she bring back the Wusa to get the cooldown off of him. So that way it could get... You know, he could come back, but that is assuming the Shizuka is going to live. I actually think we might say goodbye to the Shizuka soon, and it's just going to be on Fang. Oh, I mean, that, that is the orbs going to... Fang, does, does Fang solo? Does Fang actually solo oh, that them? was greedy! That was a little greedy. Could have taken the kill on the Nana hey, instead and locked it. down the stone. Hold on to the third. This is it. Beautiful heal. Okay. So now we're at the position, right? We knew this was coming. We knew yep. this was coming. It's all down to the unfair bear. Uh, in in additional Can turns, to be honest. Let's see it. I want to see. Whoa, Camilla! Oh, that was a big hit. The Chroma's got it, dude. That damage right there said everything. Lightning getting a round two victory over Lana here. That's what we needed to see. Was like, how much damage is the Chroma gonna do here? Because if Feng Yen. Took that really well. Feng Yen solos. That's it, Feng Yen it solos. Was, but um, that was wild. The, it was a huge hit. The game went too long. Like, that That team should have been, like, Feng, Feng's breakfast, you know? That's really what he wants to take down. But, like, the game went so long while we were trying to, like, pick away at the Nana, for instance. You know, Lana was targeting the Nana the whole time. I think we probably should have focused the, the Akroma from the first. Like, that was the main win con for Lightning. It was. The Akroma needed to be dealt with uh, a while ago. Um, but I, I get it. You know, there was a lot of sustain. You had a Nana keeping the units alive. Um, and honestly, Akroma shines. Shines late game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, the longer the game goes, the more she is favored, for sure. And that, guys, keep a track at home. That was, that was a Conqueror win. That was a C3 win. Up against up against a G three right there. Yep. To no surprise, seeing that Akroma coming back to the table here, I, I think it's very appropriate to see a unit like that in a situation where honestly, I I think Lana is was technically supposed to win a match like that. Uh, so to to bring back the Akroma, I think it, it's totally fair. Now here's an interesting unit, Stoic. That the Water Pure Vanilla. That one is kind of tricky to navigate at times. You know, that clutch little oblivion on skill two comes into play more often than than one would think. Yeah, also not showcasing a speed lead either. We know this unit has like a 110 base speed, 110, 113 base speed. It, may, it might be 110, might be even 108. I can't remember the base speed of this unit, but I know it's uh, a lot better than 100 and it is built pretty fast. So we don't have a speed lead coming out yet for, for lightning. But the Athena, I think, is a great response to potential speed coming out of lightning and we don't... Okay, I am a little confused as to why we have a Water Pure Vanilla right now, to be honest. Yeah, usually the Pure Vanilla is like signaling, it's indicative of, of turn one, we want to cleave, we want to snipe, something like that. Uh, but instead we're going with this. I think the attack buff could be helpful for maybe Diana, uh, especially if we've got some like additional damage based on attack artifacts in there. Um, who do you ban here? I'm thinking maybe just take out the fire Cassandra. Don't lose it's someone right Acroma. out the gate. Whoa. All right. So he knew that the uh, Cassandra was going to get banned because if he banned out the Acroma thinking his Cassandra went through, um, uh, obviously uh, uh, the Acroma messes up the Cassandra is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, but I think the, the way things worked out, it worked out in Lana's favor right now. Band out the uh, Diana. He's going to deal with the Chroma here. Yeah. Oh, and thank you so much in chat. We had um, Zeke who confirmed it's uh, 111 base speed for that cookie, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, 111. I knew it was up there. I, I was like, I don't That's think super. it's 113. It's very fast for a, a unit that uh, scales really well with other fast units. 
Yeah, absolutely. And it gives a speed buff, attack buff, and it like, that is a wild speed for a unit like that. Normally for, you know, quote unquote starters like that, they're usually a little bit slower on the base speed. Yeah, definitely. We're gonna see more sustain <laughs> coming out of Riley. Doug. D Doug, in noise. In noise, bye. <laughs> Sub Are we rooting Sub for, for lightning here? Is that what's happening? Yeah, we had uh, Doug jump in with the uh, <laughs> rooting for lightning. Love it. Love to see it, man. It was a great win from lightning. Like this. Uh oh, the the laps. This the attack bar gain. Oh, do you just go for go for the damage on Chroma right now? Heck yeah, yes, that's, that's what great. I'm talking about. That is mass additionals there. Ooh, that could be. That could be it. I don't want to say it. That, that could I be believe. It, though. That that would be it there. I just I don't know how he deals with the uh, Jognam. Yeah, exactly. And I think he's going to stick around. I think Lightning, and he should, to be honest. In a tournament setting, you want to play these things out until the very very end. I think he's going to stick it out until the Etna's gone. But the thing is, um, or rather, because he's about to take out the Etna, but Shizuka is going to be able to bring her back and still capitalize on those skills even after her passing. So we'll see. Yep, definitely here. Uh, I mean, perfect opportunity to drop a seal down. Nobody's got immunity up here in a situation where there's two forms of immunity on lightning side of the field. So great opportunity for a seal of magic to come out here. With the defense break, Ethna's oh. definitely going to take advantage of that. Oh, man, that damage. I'm actually surprised that he didn't go for the Annabelle there. It just kind of shows you, like, some players' priorities over others, you know? But I, I think I would have prioritized the Annabelle, generally speaking. But this game is so far in, Lon in Lana's favor. It's just an interesting uh, assessment. Yep, yeah, exactly. That's going to be it for the Annabelle. And that's definitely going to be it for Lightning here, as uh, Lana's going to be taking round three. Yeah, but let, let's go Lightning for that one win in there too but lana played a great game this was stellar banned well drafted well like these units synergize great together too yep great little showcase for people that own an acroma acroma obviously does really really well with a lot of sustain um build a tanky get your attack power through time spent in the match and uh you'll get your damage eventually uh when it comes to acroma so i, I honestly i think it was well drafted in my eyes uh, i like the way that second match went I agree. Uh, so let's go Lana and GZ to Lightning, too, for putting up such a good fight. Great second round for the America Summit, to be honest, guys. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this tournament so far. I, like you mentioned, Stoic, for Chroma owners out there, I think that was a great showcase. I think sometimes a Chroma can kind of fall by the wayside a little bit. She really put in the work, Stoic. Yep, that's right. Keep in mind, like, Lightning just got a win. He just earned his first summoner's point. In, in the summit, and that is huge because anybody that was competing and pushing for a Wednesday, Lightning, a C3 player, has one of the most important points you want to achieve in the summit, and he's got one to his name already. Yeah, that is that's pretty stellar, and that was showing best rank too. So that was a genuine C3 defeating a G3. That was pretty great. Yep. Exactly, it's really great to see that. Um, Jognam, he's got a good showing tonight. You know, the the water tank boy looking really good been a pretty high pick rate for that unit you know it's like people seem to really like him yeah a lot of people have been using him uh we're seeing him all over the place he's i i, I want to say heavily draft drafted in um the competitive scene right now in, in g3 um it, it's pretty cool to see that because i'm not seeing too much of his counterparts i think a little bit of uh uh wind version of him being used but dominantly it's that that water version yeah, predominantly the water one. I, I know that some folks are enjoying the dark, but he's not seeing a ton of play. I think the dark is like right there from being really, really good. I mean, it's look like at the, the draft right here. Riley, Annabelle, that just calls for... Uh, oh, the God, here I go with this name. Uh, Go, uh, I Gap, think that one Gap Goop? Gap -goop. <laughs> is it Gap Goop? Gap Goop. Gap good job. Gap 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 Let's yeah. go. <laughs> it does. You're exactly. So he's built for situations like that where you're presenting like an Annabella Riley, like even Rakuni, Bird heals on skill one. Um Kinky before his his nerf in the most recent balance patch was uh, was a really good signal to bring a Gapsu before. Now it doesn't heal him unfortunately, so it's slightly less good, but like for all those incidental healings like Gapsu's really solid. Uh I think he's like right there from being super good super meta uh, having meta potential 
take a look guys here is the new standing for the bracket right now this is the winner's bracket so so far we've populated the quarterfinals with topa v and lana now we still have zelda and zazos to look forward to and true whale and crocodile rounding out the winner's brackets final matchup in the first round stoic those are two swc competitors by the way yep that's right i mean it's pretty wild to 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 see this already i mean it's been an exciting summit you know, we're going to have an exciting bottom bracket, watching people still trying to get their points, get their victories and, uh, you know, get themselves some some summoners points, get it on the map and prepare themselves for the following month as well. So it, it's been good. I look forward to the next matches we have ahead of us. Yeah, me too. Oh, I see. I, I, I see some folks over in chat asking where they can buy these shirts. They don't see them on the store. You know, I think, I don't know if these shirts in particular are actually still in print. I think, where, where did we get these, Stoic? I don't even remember where we got these. Oh, come on. I remember when I got it and it goes back to 2019. It was my first time casting alongside with Make It A Bud. These were our first shirts. We casted a legendary tournament together. Oh, that that is awesome i would and so guys I, I would turn around to show you the back but there are there's green on it so it's going to be chroma oh actually no it's not look at that we're good look at that zeratu oh because it's like a it's like a teal blue it's like a teal blue instead and so uh there's also an artemio one i have the arda one as well um it's a it's inverted colors though so it's like white and then black font it's very cool yeah, check out the Come to a Store. There's a lot of cool stuff on there. Maybe I'll try to wrap a shirt from the Come to a Store next time. So that way, if you guys like that, you can, you know, kind of, it will show it off a little bit. Stoic and I will match. Did you, I didn't do this on purpose. I love that we're I didn't do this on purpose. Way. Well, so funny enough, I have uh, other Summer's War shirts, but it was like, we are, we have a New York, Orlando, Chicago. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I do a lot of yard work. So I cut the sleeves off all of them. <laughs> so, so they're sleeveless. So I was like, dang, I go, I pull one up because I, I could have swore I had one. And I was like, it still has sleeves on it. And I go, I pull up sleeveless, sleeveless, sleeveless. I'm like, okay, that's I need great. one. And I was like, oh, there's one. But I was hoping for like the Summer's War logo on it. I was like, that's, you know, they asked to do a Summer's War shirt. So I was like, I'll do that one. But uh, yeah, no, this is all I had. And, uh, you know, it worked out because apparently we've been summoned together. We've been summoned together. We're a pair, you know. It's like we 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 come attached at the hip, guys. Like it, you know, there is not one without the other. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love, I love this one. Okay, guys. So we're we're queuing up for the next game. This is going to be Zelda and Zazos, right? Coming up next, if I if I remember correctly, this is going to be another. Exciting one. We we've seen Zazos play before. Yep, Zazos is actually the point leader from Latin American side. He went head-to-head -head with Thompson last year as our runner-up for America's Summit. So we'll see how he does here. He's going up against Zelda. We've got another interesting pairing. So we only remember Zazos from uh, the previous year. I'm sure there's lots of stuff that has changed. But once again, it's the Latin side, the Latin American side of um, our, our matches where we were not able to watch them during our Wednesday matches or our Wednesday uh, summits. So here we are to check out both these players uh, in person now. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Ari, you guys have telepathy. I think we might. It it would make sense, to be honest, at this point. I know. We've been just working together for so long now. Exactly. Oh, Verd, Gapsu, gameplay. Gapsu, hello. <laughs> it's like one Gapsu, instance of Gapsu. healing. Gapsu. I keep calling him Gap Goop. <laughs> Gap Gap Goop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, Mayo Wang and Josephine joined the freight. Now there is a unit that I've been playing more with. I kind of fell out of using Josephine some, you know, like the last couple seasons. She is great. I don't know why I ever stopped using Josephine. Uh oh. Oh, I mean, we've got another Chroma coming in here as well. Not this uh, I think my only gripe right now with seeing this Josephine is I can't help but feel like it's early. Like there's still so much time to drop it into Oliver. Obviously, I think the Fire Monkey King acts as like a deterrent for Oliver because all these turns that Oliver takes just only make sure Mei Wang feels so much faster. Exactly. And yeah, the Josephine, to your credit, I, I agree with you. It's... Uh, taken a little bit early because Chandra is actually the only thing presenting stuns unless this segment is ruined on despair. Mm, I mean, that could be something right here. Like the Zelda, you know, got plenty of matches in with Zezas, met him on the ladder plenty of times. Know that this is, in fact, a despair segment. Oh, there's one more instance of stun. I, you know, we have what it takes to take down the Verd. 
So I don't necessarily need to ban the Vert. I would potentially, you, I could see him banning, I could see Zelda banning Speed Lead. I could see him banning Sekmet. I could see him ban, nice, there you go. Banning one of those starting units is great for me. Yeah, the facilitator. So he bans out that Ethna. That's definitely a unit that needs to go. It kind of like sets you up and may even like just just kick you off and well, kicking the person in the uh, kicking it off in the right place for whoever drafted the Ethna, and then Zelda not wanting to have to deal with that immediately. And you know why I'm I, I like it even more because it's one of the only two sources of defense break on that team too. Oh, dude, I predict Gyo is going to be popping off. Yeah, I think Yo is going to be pretty nasty here. Um, but I mean, Vertiheal still yields a big, big problem here for Zelda. It's a lot of attack by gain for him to lap. Oh, do you? It, that was a little dangerous. I was just about to ask if you take that move on Vert right now. I personally hold when I've got glancing because the, the, the gain is not, you know, the juice is not worth the squeeze, as it were, you know? Yeah, correct. I, I don't think he was in a position to even attempt the second skill. He, his health was still in an okay place. Um, the glancing being applied, you're almost not going to be seeing that defense break coming out there. So I don't know if that was the move, but it, it is what it is, right? <laughs> yes, it, that was a good kill on the Gyo. I would have personally loved to see some more damage go in on that Chow while it has defense break because the Chow is actually looking to be a thorn in Zezus' side a little bit. I think it's the only unit that could really do something, but oh, we got another chance. It lapped it. That's amazing because of the Verd. That's great. Very good Akroma damage. He was definitely confident in Chroma dealing with the Chow there, so that was a good job getting rid of that unit. Josephine, again, kind of like what I was saying, I felt like it was a little too early for the Josephine. Josephine's getting, like, no use out here. It's not a unit that's built super fast. It's a unit that takes advantage of its passive, and it gains turns through the despair stun or the stuns just happening on the field here. So it almost makes this draft feel very much like a three versus four, where your Josephine isn't able to really do anything. Very true. Yeah, Josephine always feels like she takes a lot of turns, but really it's because she gets a turn through her passive and then procs normally. And then she kind of gets in a, incidental attacks through the counterattack buff that she puts on herself with the skill too. So it feels like she's getting a lot of turns, but she's not normally really fast. Yep, that's right. Well, those pre-bans right there, Cigar and Riley, now available as we get into round number two. New pre-bans coming in here. Vertiheel had a problem with the Vertiheel, and I, I agree. I thought, I thought Verd was... Uh, too much. There's a lot of attack bar being gained for Zeza, so rightfully so. Bird's gonna get the ban. Gyo, a troublesome unit, or a pesky unit, Evan, getting the ban here. Very pesky. Might have been might have been better for Zelda in that game if the Meiho Wang could set up the defense break on the Verd and then Chao could justice, but we kind of saw it, you know, in the opposite last time. Jackson at home, hello. I know. And I, uh, I don't know if there's enough on this field to make me even like this unit <laughs> right now. I, 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 yeah, I, I've, I've come across, I do like it. I think the Fire Pure Vanilla is fine, but that's like in a world of where it's like, this pushes attack bar, this pushes attack bar. We only have a cigar right now. <laughs> yeah, we only have the cigar. That's the only pushback uh, that we're seeing. So. There's worse things that could be in that slot. Let's see if it makes a difference. I am so open to be pro being proven wrong in this situation. I I'd love, love being proven, proven wrong. I, I think it's great. Yeah. Um, that's a despair segment. You know what? There's the, the justifying oh. um, Josephine potential. Justifying. justifying the Josephine in post is hilarious, by the way. Like, <laughs> big hit coming out from the Chandra, set up by AoE defense breaks there. Oh man, this looks painful Look at this damage, look at this damage, 1.6, 2.2, taking advantage of the defense breaks that were out there as well, so like, that's that's a lot of damage, man. Yeah, gotta, gotta take out the, uh, gotta take out the Riley soon too, it still has access to skill 4 and skill 3 right now, can put up immunity. It's not a huge deal, it's not the end of the world, that's a pretty solid multiplier on that skill 3 by the way, Sekhmet can actually push out some serious damage with that. Yep, she really can. I think he actually was to try to get rid of this Fire Monkey King, and that's what he's doing, because I think that was going to be enough damage coming out of uh, the Neftus. Oh, this comp's so good. Oh, it's so good. Nice little heal block sitting on top of the Fire Pure Vanilla. Fire Pure Vanilla not able to heal herself up here. We don't scoop until Chow is gone. 
That's the word. That's right. You know what? I think Chow also might be ruined, uh, just like a Camilla. <laughs> On optimism. Pure optimism. <laughs> <laughs> Faith and optimism and hopes and dreams. Oh my god, everyone's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Zazoth with the 2-0 against Zelda. Well, I mean, that, there's your, your Latin American champion of last year, so it's a no surprise to see him do so well getting the 2-0, earning his first two points, or his first two summoner's points in this matchup here. So, no surprise here. Uh, well done, well drafted. Uh, obviously, I, I've got gripes with the first matchup, and I've got gripes, but oh, then yeah? again, you were playing up against a player like, like Zezas. Exactly. Yeah, Zezas. Big name with big plays. You know, he's he is a strong player. I love seeing him work his magic up there. Uh, what what were your gripes with the first game? Was it the Josephine too early? It was the Josephine too early. <laughs> I, I think there's great opportunity to to bring it in as a last pick. He, Josephine's a counter pick. Uh, it's a counter pick, but also it's known as a Luxac unit where you're trying to you know, just take advantage of someone, despair stunning a lot, and then hopefully violent procking and getting your passive back up again. Um, and it, it was just, it was picked a little too early in my eyes, not enough stuns coming out there and it allows a Zezas to, to draft accordingly to, to not have a Josephine pop off. Exactly. I, I see someone saying nerf Chandra and Cigar. No need, no need. There's there. I think they're fine. It's, it's more so just like I, it, what Stoic said kind of summed it up perfectly. I think there was just sort of a, not even a missed pick, just a missed timing. You know, I think that Josephine might've been reconsidered if, if we saw her later in the draft instead of where she popped up. Yeah, like you said, she's a counter pick. Yep. There was also no response to the Verda heal in that first match as well, and Verda heal just pumped out way too much attack bar gain for Zezas, and uh, Zelda was just way too far behind to get any sort of advantage over Zezas in that situation, with, in my opinion, already being down a unit like Josephine. True. And now we get to look forward to the next set, by the way. True Whale versus Crocodile to wrap up the first round before we get into the quarterfinals and the loser's bracket. Uh, so True Whale and Crocodile both made appearances in SWC. Like this is gonna be, this is a lot of heat at the end of round one. Yep, it is. I mean, True, True Whale, one of those household names. Everybody knows him, everybody knows what he's got. He's got a lot of stuff. Do we know everything that he's got? He's got so much. Uh, but these are our two point leaders on the NA side of things here. So we've been watching Crocodile, we've been watching True Whale play. Uh, there's a lot of exciting things to, to happen here, you know. Both players playing very, very well. Uh, been going back and forth when it came to the uh, point bracket throughout these Wednesdays, you know, overtaking each other. And they've just been at the top of this bracket this entire time. Oh, yeah, and they deserve it. This is going to be big. Here we go. True Whale versus Crocodile rounding out our round one before we get into the bottom bracket. Let's see what pre-bans these folks have. And look at that number one legend right by True Whale's name. Yep, that's right. He is a legend winner, a finalist, and yeah, an SWC finalist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's go water animals. Yeah, this is an aquatic animal <laughs> showcase. <laughs> Ooh, Neftis oh, and Wajet getting the pre-ban here. Crocodile with the first pick. Let's see if he chooses to take something away from True Whale, if he can. It's a good... Good pre-ban. We know that True Whale's been playing a lot of Laura Wedget, so Crocodile managed to neutralize both of those picks. Granted, I don't know if that's what True Whale's been representing in the Goodwill lobbies leading up to today. It was what he was playing during America's Cup as well as the finals last year in SWC. Well, this is super interesting. Shizuka Ragdoll. This is what I opened up with for a while, and I stopped doing it because it wasn't consistent anymore. I This is just very interesting to me to see this coming out of him right now. Let's see what happens. Maybe this could be the thing that makes you change those runes away from like Vanessa Cigar and back towards Shizuka and Ragdoll. Yeah, let, let, well, Shizuka and Ragdoll still have their runes, but let's see if I can draft it. I can't. Wait, I can't <gasps> draft. No it. way. No I way. I can draft that too, Evan. Evan, I have both those units. Wait, you can draft all everybody this. Has, <laughs> everybody has those units. <laughs> They're both oh fusion monsters. <laughs> everybody has these units. So let's see how it goes. This is okay. This is crazy because like. There's a Shizuka and a Ragdoll, yeah, but this is 50% farmable. <laughs> True Will is supposed to have almost everything in this game or everything people would want in this game, and he just drafted two fusion monsters. <laughs> Yeah, in all seriousness though, like I, I love what I love these monsters being represented here, but like I think the Veramos is actually, you know, it might be uh the Veramos is cool against the attack break and the glancing. 
from the Eleanoa and the dots from Juno. But that's, let's see, is there anything else? I guess also the, the death break. Yeah, I, I think oh, the Veramos is fine now. for sure. Um, I, I do think Fire Monkey King is going to be a bit of a problem for Truel. It does offer a little bit of crit rate for the Nick, uh, for the Nikki, for the, um, for Ragdoll. So Ragdoll is going to be gaining a little bit of attack bar off of this. Juno, uh, Eleanor, Laura, Fire. All right. We're gaining, we're gaining attack bar here. What I'm trying to say. I think the Nikki is very good here. May even be the ban. Um, no, Shizu uh, is going to soak up the ban here. Wow. Wow. And you can still draft this whole thing, by the way. <laughs> oh, I, uh, you know what? <laughs> I can still. Yeah, things are looking dark here for, for Truewell, but honestly, in a good way. Things are looking dark indeed, man. That was great. Look at that. Dark HP lead of 50% too. That's pretty great. Hey, these are going to be some real, real. Look at that real. additional damage on top of Eleanoa. That was very good. Heavens, heavens to Betsy. He can get a clutch little uh, stomp in here if he wants. 3.1k coming out of the attack buff Verima, so that wasn't too bad here. No stuns that he was looking for on top of uh, either Eleanor or this uh, uh, wind uh, pure vanilla. Uh oh. Oh no, this is this is perfect for Verimos, by the way. This is exactly the situation that True Will brought him for. He's doing everything he can, but that 50% HP lead from Gapsu is just so tanky. It's making everyone so tanky. You see that attack bar from Gapsu, by the way, when everybody got healed? Yep, that is true. That was a lot of attack bar here. A little bit of damage coming towards the Fire Mud King. It's the one unit that I said we need to get rid of here, and he's pushing for it. He's really trying to get rid of this. Nice additional turn. We've got a heal block coming from Nikki, and that's what's going to be stopping this uh, Fire Mud King from healing, and that's so, it was so important to land. Uh, he does need to confirm the kill on that Fire Monkey King because it's going to get healed. Oh, there we go. That's going to get this first. A little bit. Up. This is what I've been talking about, man. I think Gopsu was, he was right there and ready to be meta. I love seeing him have attention. You know, now that he cleanses, he cleanses a debuff at the start of his turn, which I think is exactly the sort of thing he needed to truly be Daddy Raccoonie. Yep, exactly. Big second skill, that's a Despair Eleanor getting another stun there on top of two of the units of True Wheel here. Brutal Order is going to be coming out here. Pushing up the back bar. Uh -oh. Big second skill is coming right back. Veramos is going to go. Veramos is going to go. Oh, he died to die. Veramos is going to go. Veramos no, is Veramos still alive. Around. He's still wow. here. He's still around. No way. The Veramos and the Gatsu are what made the difference here. Also, the additionals from Nikki. Yeah, sure, whatever. But Veramos <laughs> and Gatsu, baby, that's what I'm talking about. Wow, I gotta, oh, I gotta ruin up a gap move, dude. Absolutely, this is the farmable representation that I'm talking about. Yeah. Daddy Virtue, baby. looking pretty good too. That was really, really, really nice. He's got skills now available with the Nikki too. Yeah, Veramos, Veramos and Gapsu really, truly made the difference. 2.7k to finish off the... Dang. Yeah, great numbers coming out of Nikki. I mean, I'm putting out... Ah, uh, what am I? I'm almost 2k I'm putting out with Nikki, so that's incredible additionals he has on top of that Nikki. Wow. 2.7k. That must be... To, to, get, to get it to that level of difference, those are definitely some solid artifacts. It, it was a really great is. game from Crocodile, too. I saw SW Whale's comment in chat said Crocodile throwing. I don't think so at all. I think he put up a solid fight. I really do. I think he almost got the kill on Veramos. He was right there, and that actually would have helped him a ton. But that HP lead from Gapsu in a full dark team, that was a crazy amount of benefit. Yeah. I mean, I think also um, if Fire Monkey didn't have a heal block, we could have been singing a different tune in that first match. But the Nikki heal block on top of Mayo Wang just really shut that unit down from causing the chaos that he could have caused uh, in that match. Because I think Veramos would have dropped. Um, I think the, the next unit to go was probably going to be that, that Nikki. Um, but yeah, just... It, it was well drafted, to be honest with you. To see two fusible units like that uh, pair up and do so well for for True Whale was uh, inspiring in my eyes. I, <laughs> I I am going to be planning things uh, when we finish up here. <laughs> I have plans that I cannot share. <laughs> yeah, I, everybody should have one 
like ruined up you know i, I think the gapsu is super cool i like having the Ver veramos low-key good here too but i think it actually might be a little bit too reserved for what true whale's playing right now i'd like to see a strip Thank you. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Some strip options to round it out. Isn't that interesting, Stoic, the way that, like, True Whale chooses to wrap up his draft with the strip and the additional speed lead instead of starting with that? I know. So many... Well, it, this is crazy pivot. First of all, this is insane pivot. Go from the first match to see where we are right now. This is a super crazy pivot coming out of True Whale. Wraps up with a Water Ryu Chunk Pung, where a lot of people start with a Water Ryu Chunk Pung. Uh, obviously, double speed lead for True Whale. He does want that turn one. Laura is a problem, but I think what Crocodile actually showed, going with a Juno and a Mayo Wang after that, showed, hey, I'm going to go turn two. I don't want this turn one. So the speed lead's irrelevant. Uh, the Laura may have to be the ban, but obviously Ragdoll is a problem here uh, with after what True Whale laid down here, uh, the Water Ryu Chunk Pong. Here we go, guys. We got game point for True Whale right now. Oh, That's a fast uh, Zabala. Zabala? Oh, Zabala is, is, is a very fast unit with a 250. Oh, I'm sorry, oh. plus 115 speed. Look at that. You got the buff block on the Juno, too. How cool is that? Really nice. Not bad additional damage, big second skill coming out here. We can't tell if this is built on Despair. I believe it's a swift Ryu. I didn't I, I didn't notice any stuns coming out of it. Yeah, so it I can't be. I can't remember what the Ryu is ruined on for, for true, but I believe it is a swift. I don't think it's despair. We we might find out later in this match here. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we'll get a little bit of insight into that, too. Wow, huge damage on Laura. She's almost out right now. True Whale looking to have kind of a commanding lead. And just a huge, again, like a massive pivot. Like, True Will has so much to offer. I think that's what makes him such a dangerous player to play up against. It's very, very tough to predict uh, True Whale's um, draft style, especially based off of our first match into our second match. Let's also uh, let everybody know throughout uh, our Wednesdays, True Will, there was a pre-ban and he was only pre-banning the Fire Frankenstein. <laughs> huh. Well, everybody else everybody uh, play was, to play with. Yeah, he, he just let everybody play with whatever they wanted and he just did a Fire Frankenstein. So shout out to True Will uh, being a sport <laughs> during the Wednesdays. That is some, that is some good, good sportsmanship. It's like, I'm gonna compete, but I'm not trying to like, you know, just pub stomp right now i'm like actually you know trying to have some fun and i want you guys to have some fun too and i know that i'm you know i have closed you know in swc i've done well <laughs> you know I've, I've been legend done all that and to your earlier point too stoic i think what true whale really excels at is improvisation you know he's he can change it up so drastically before we started this matchup with a with a turn two bruiser comp that's all about just outlasting and sustaining through auto cleanse and now we're doing a control. We're doing a control setup. Although things are looking, admittedly, a little fragile right now after that Nefty's got skill two off. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we all know Fire Monkey King has that ability to solo. So, as great as things did look early, Fire Monkey King, Fire Monkey King in Juno. These are units known to solo. It's a beautiful stun going out onto the uh, Zabal. That's a beautiful despair stun oh. going out onto the Ryu. Yeah. I was gonna say you capitalize on it. Passives down right now. Keep pumping that water Ryu. And I think Crocodile can take a match. Oh, he's got, he's got, he didn't have pass it back. Uh oh, that's it. Oh. Crocodile took a match. Oh, there we go. Crocodile taking a match away from True Whale there. Very, very cool. Good for him. The Crocodile had, he found that window. That one window is all he needed. Nefty's using skill two, probably the most impactful like skill that you can throw out uh, in a moment of non immunity. And uh, he ro he rolled with it. He saw his moment. Good for him. Yep, definitely could. It's going to be a interesting match. Uh, match number three here. Uh, I I, there, I feel like there's nothing I could possibly even be like predicting like what area True Will decides to to go with this one. But let's see what Crocodile brings to the table. Is he? Are we going to see a turn one potentially? Turn two coming out of Crocodile. Uh, I love this preemptive ban here. Oh, I'm sorry. Pontos was uh, the pre-ban from last time with the Hay Gang. Wait, no, that wasn't... Oh, that was right. That was right. The Hay Gang and Pontos getting pre-banned uh, in that last match. So Neftis and uh, yeah, Widget getting pre-banned here. Now we're back. We're back to the uh, round one 
Round one pre-bans. We're back to it again. And this is the exact same setup that we saw last time. All the way down to the yep. first pick. Same here. Same here. Everything is the same. Let's see what happens with Crocodile. Does he change? I, I would definitely assume there's going to be a transition here with, with Crocodile so he doesn't run into that same thing that happened to him. Uh, Juno, very interesting to see coming out right now. Let's see what he can do. Juno, nice, good response to Shizuka. Can kind of cleanse what she puts on and strip what she puts up. So, oh, he's taking his time on this last one. Oh, oh this my is, god, we see the same draft so, something's, something's going on here. Interesting. Gap Goop comes back with the Veramoss. Gap Goop. <laughs> <laughs> I love this, man. I I, I want to see it again. Uh, stellar Ooh, response, hello. by the way. Yeah, stellar I, response. I, this is, yeah, this I is the situation that Veramos doesn't do well in. synergy with uh, Eleanor, too. You're so right, actually. He does have great synergy with that. Um, hey, gang. I mean, there's not really any strip, though, so... So I don't know about the Hay Gang, but it is a 100% activation rate on the Strip. So if he really wants to open it up for Varad, but then True Whale could also just ban the Varad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Bans out the Varad here. There's a lack of damage on the side of Crocodile. And that's where, like, Abelio can feel kind of oppressive. Uh, where that, in, in a time of Crocodile finding an, finding an opening for damage, uh, Abelio just cuts in there and just nullifies that, that kind of damage. So let's see what happens. Let's see. I'd love to see Gapsu and Veramos pop off again, very selfishly, admittedly, just because I like these units a lot. So it'd be, it's cool to see them represented at this level of play. Predicted future comes up. He gets a nice little stun on the Veramos. And I think Truel just has more damage where Abelio does have a great passive, is built very tanky. Uh, has the sustain, but also you've got a second skill that Wild World deals a lot of damage. So, so my one question for you, Stoic, is like, what is with the Hay Gang here? What's what? What was that pick about? I can't help but feel like it was maybe he was looking for a strip option, and the only thing he was happy with was a is a Hay Gang. Because I feel like if he okay. had a Praha, you put a Praha in that position over a Hay Gang. Yes, I I love that suggestion actually because it's also got damage through additionals on skill one. It's got cycling. It has it has strip. Although you don't really need strip in this situation unless you're leaving the Shizuka in. I would have actually left the Shizuka. Uh, pick Praha. And then ban, well, ban so I think so. Crocodile was trying to to play a mind game there by bringing in a strip was saying he was letting the Shizuka through to make True Whale be like, okay, so we brought a strip, Shizuka goes through, I'm okay with banning this because of that situation. But then Crocodile bans out the Shizuka, but thought he brought in a good stripper in the form of Hay Gang to also offer his team yeah. a little bit more utility. But again, pro probably being a better utility strip option to make that kind of play or, or bluff uh, in, that, in this situation. I also saw someone in chat uh, mention maybe picking a Chung Pung in that place too could also be good because then you get half and half because what ultimately Crocodile could have used here too is a little bit more follow-up. We only had the Varad. If you have one more piece of follow-up, then you're good to go. El Elanoa Chung Pung is a great combination too. It is. Because you'll notice that like ultimately True Whale's team is at full health and he's not spending any resources to do it. Like this is just auto playing. Yeah, if he had more sustain, obviously Juno provides a little bit of sustain here. Um, just, uh, just another reason to enjoy the Praha just a little bit more. It would have offered just more longevity to Crocodile's draft here. Yeah, it's it is it is already over, but by this point you do want to stop using Hanging Skill too because it fuels it fuels Veramos's healing by giving more debuffs. There we go, clean win from True Whale on the final match. There, great three game setup. Thank you to Crocodile, too, for that showcase as well. And remember, Crocodile's not out. I gotta remind everybody one more time, we do have a bottom bracket, which we're gonna be going to now that we've finished this first round. What'd you think of that matchup there, Stoic? It was great. I mean, we got to see 
fusion units just absolutely shine here. These are units that everybody has access to. You can get your Gap Goop and your Veramoss, and they're going to do phenomenal for you. So. <laughs> I'm I love that. that. That's, like, that's like GG, right? It's like, G hey, GG, Gap Goop, you know? It's like, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was great, greatly drafted. Uh, it was awesome to see this. Uh, I love that I got to 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 feel like I can do this too because I've got the ragdoll and the Nikki. So I'm really happy about that first match there. Um, but and keep in mind, let's let's keep, also keep in mind, you know, even though uh, Crocodile lost the the best of three, he did earn himself a summoner's point here with that victory that he did get in round two over True Whale. So those are points. Like we said, every victory is going to earn yourself some summoner's points. So really really big that people do their best get the points that they can uh, and we encourage it because once again we start this over and we do it all over again next month so you want to earn you want to make it to the monthly end you want to be here you want to accumulate these summit points win or lose do your best and uh you know this is the summit this is not swc it's not yeah this is you, you still want to put in your best but it, it is it is absolutely not swc although swc is coming soon and we got the announcements for the locations for SWC, and the finals are going to be in Tokyo. Whew. Changes, Evan. Lots of changes to SWC this year. So <laughs> tons very of changes this year. Tons of changes. Anyway, great games from True Whale and Crocodile. That was super fun to see. Take a look at this, guys. This is the bottom bracket. We got a game from Thompson and Lightning, and then Zelda and Crocodile as well. That's going to be our round one tiebreakers that we're going to be going into right after a quick 10 minute break. So make sure you stick around so you can see those tiebreakers.
Oh, hello and welcome back everybody to the America's Summit. This is the first monthly trial for February of 2024. I'm still Evan and that I think is still stoic. Still here, still awake. I mean, this had a much better time for me. So like if sure. I could do legendary tournaments at this time, I'd be grand, dude. So yeah, yeah still stoic, still awake, still successful. doing fine. Way more way accessible more, time for you. That's crazy, man. Yeah, guys, we had a great round one, and now we're about to head into the bottom bracket. Uh, we got Thompson versus Lightning and also Zelda versus Crocodile. We do. I mean, Thompson wasn't out, so we did lose against Topa V, but he's back in here. These are everyone's chances to uh, earn some Summoner's War points before the night is over. So it's really important to get these kind of wins because this is the only place you can earn these Summoner's points. So all these players worked so hard to get here to make it to the monthly trial. But again, we said it before and we'll say it again. There is next month where again, all of these players are going to be playing their Wednesdays earning their points to make it to the monthly trials to once again have a shot to earn more summoners points. Yeah, and those summoners points carry on and then they determine who comes to Los Angeles for the in-person finals. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be big, guys. 2024 America Summit is off to a great start and we'll be with you along the way too. It's going to be great doing more monthly trials in the future too. Um, yeah, I, people in chat asking for advice after that one. Man, I'm be asking for how to incorporate Gapsu in my <laughs> gameplay. So, like, that was pretty. That was a great farmable monster showcase at the end, dude. That was great. That was awesome. Chat, looking forward, looking forward. We got Thompson and Lightning coming up next. This is going to be a big one, man. Thompson's Thompson's got a lot of power behind him. Lightning put up a good fight before. Do you think he's got it in him to take down Thompson? Uh, I mean, Thompson definitely has uh, one of those almost True Will-esque styles where it's like there's a lot in Thompson's wheelhouse where you, you look at True and you're like, what do you ban? Like, what do you do? Where, you know, Thompson, he, he's got, he doesn't have as much, but he's got a lot in the wheelhouse as well. Um, I think it's very dependent on does he draft Ada or not? <laughs> it always comes down to that for you, doesn't it? It's like if he's got Arda, he's losing. <laughs> I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. But this is going to be a, uh, this is going to be a fun one here with Thompson and Lightning. Uh, pre bands coming out right here. Good luck to Lightning. Uh, best luck to Thompson. Both these players looking to uh, lock in at least some summers points here. Oh, bad monster pre band, huh, Stoic? Uh, no, I <laughs> I know what you mean. Uh, Ragdoll's totally fine here. So Ragdoll getting the pre ban. Um, I feel like you pre-ban a ragdoll if Lightning is going to draft like turn one, play you know play heavy speed lead up against Thompson. But I don't think that's what you do. I don't think you play turn one against someone like Thompson. So I'm not a fan of the ragdoll pre-ban. This, in my opinion, is um, Lightning doesn't have enough experience playing up against Thompson or knowing what Thompson's going to be bringing to the table here. Because I was going to say, Lore is the the unit that you want to probably pre-ban going up against Thompson. We're probably going to see that as we get into the match number uh, two with uh, Thompson in Lightning. Love love the call out on the Laura as the pre-ban option. We saw that earlier today. I, we saw, uh, we've seen Laura pre-bans all over the place, you know, in the last game between True Whale and Crocodile. Crocodile was pre-banning Laura um, against True Whale, and I would like to see that done here too. I mean, that 120 base speed, it's a great stripper still, even after nerf, and it's got crowd control. And we're seeing the return of the Light Hollyberry, by the way. Yep, Light Hollyberry coming back out here. Who knows? Maybe Light Hollyberry might find her way in a pre ban as well. So we'll see how well um, she does here going up against Lightning. But Lightning, again, bringing back the Acroma, bringing back some more turn two style of play. Juno, Riley. Oh, the Dominic for, for a little bit of uh, true damage to get through that added defense that the Light Holly Bear is going to be putting on. We have two defense buffing units, which is starting to add some context nope. to the Annabelle nope. pre-ban nope. to avoid the three-turn okay. death break. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. So I was hoping you weren't going to say, and then we're going to see an Ada coming in here because we're not, right, Thompson? I, I don't, I don't, not. I don't love right. Arda here. <laughs> 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 not even I love Arda in this situation, but like, you know what? Well, Juno crits. Juno crits. Yeah, ban Shizuka, so there's no death break. That's so funny. Thompson was on a mission to eliminate all sources of defense break on the table. That's exactly what he did. Yep, and it was great. So, Light Hollyberry, definitely going to be a problem here for Lightning. Let's see what happens again at around a number one between Lightning and Thompson. Let's see it. Boom. Big, def big defense break. Let's see the damage. Capitalize on it. Oh! Half health. Yeah, really good damage. 
Man, and Didn't then Mosh is going to be primed and ready to get rid of this Juno as well. Sheesh. Sheesh. Oh, my word. Perfectly yep. executed strategy. I just love the... I'm going to just get rid of every defense break on the table for, for Lightning. That was so funny. Thompson had a game plan in mind from the beginning. Yeah, let's see the damage. It's attack buff, uh, Dominic. So we knew it was going to do well. Attack buff, Akroma, with initial turns as well, deals with that uh, Oliver very, very well. We're trading. We're trading units right now. Like, oh, there's really good sources of damage on both sides of the table here. Because, you know, Masha's great against Dom. The Akroma's great against the Masha. Like, it, the, it, the, the, the light Holly Bear is kind of good against everybody. It really is, especially in the situation right now. But... You know, it's definitely not over for Lightning at all. I feel like Thompson, if he can get rid of this Dominic soon, oh dang, he's definitely gonna get rid of Dominic soon. Yeah, and now it's, he's in a much better situation right now. So obviously, Riley providing lots of sustain, attack buff to the Akroma, allowing Akroma to deal a little bit of damage here. Um, I give a lot of favor right now to, to Thompson. Yeah, I, if I'm Lightning, I'm still not quitting though, you know, but but definitely a lot of favor to Thompson. As long as Akroma's in play and we've got a rune on Optimism, we stay in. Yeah, look at that damage, man. Taking advantage of the defense breaks and Thompson looking pretty good right now. Earning his yes. first point from the summit. Yeah, he's looking very strong. <laughs> this game would be fun. Jesus, that's so funny. Oh, and Thompson takes the first round against Lightning. Yeah, Thompson had a had a plan in the pick ban phase, and it was kind of funny to watch him just eliminate all the death breaks. Yeah, he definitely had a plan. I want to say Lightning is going to draft very, very different in this match. I'm expecting the lore make it into the pre ban here. Um, I don't think you worry about that that light cookie, but you just draft around it potentially. Yeah. I um... I don't hate the Juno in this situation because it can remove all the buffs. It can remove the death buff that Laura's putting, the defense buff from the cookie. It's more so just like the Masha is so dangerous against it. Yes, exactly. Masha is known to be one of those Juno counters. Oh, a Han, a Han pre-ban is kind of a... I don't know. It, it Thompson is known for like occasionally doing that sort of snipe comp, but he hasn't been presenting it. Uh, this evening, I know. Yeah, he hasn't. He hasn't shown it, so I feel like that might be some misplaced ban going into uh, into Han here. I I, I, I love the Juno work? take. That's awfully mean of him to take that Juno away from Lightning, but I do love the Juno <laughs> take. <laughs> it's a good take. I I probably would have liked to see a pre ban on the Laura, like you called out in the first game. Yeah, indeed. Let's see what happens here. Lightning showcasing a 33 speed lead. Let's see if he actually takes advantage of that. The Dominic did perform well, so definitely makes sense to see the Dominic coming back for Lightning. Oh, you know what? I actually wanted to compliment that Dom. The Dom did crazy damage. Now, with attack buff, I think Dominic always will do some very, very serious damage there. And there's the Laura that should have been in the pre-ban, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And we got the speed lead from the Chandra too, and the protection. Probably mm -hmm. going to be using the the light cookie here again. Uh, it feels like it that we could see that light cookie here. You already set up with one defense break, with you know Shizuka potentially bringing more in here. We might see a complete pivot coming out of Thompson. I, I don't think we need to see that light Holly Berry come out for Thompson. I think he can really change things up here. I know the Minato comes off as a solo unit. It, it does kind of come off as solo for sure, but it does also present more instances of defense break, stun, etc. Like, Thompson could go for something to just take it out right away, like a Narsha, or like, um, oh, CR Gianna. That's a, that yep. is a cool choice. It tells me he might be banning Shizuka. You don't necessarily want all those bombs in the pool. Um, but I don't know. What do you think? Well, he's about not this worried about that 33 speed lead at all. Like, there's nothing about Lightning's team that says, "Good thing I have this 33 because I'm going to be taking turn one with X, Y, Z." Uh, none of that's going to be happening. Uh, I don't care how fast this Dominic is. It's just not going to capitalize or cut in front of um, pretty much all five units of Thompson. Yeah, I think you ban Masha and then Gianna. There you go. That is. There you go. Ban the Masha. Take out the Gianna if you're Lightning. I think both players ban the right units there.
Yep, I agree. Definitely agree here. I think Masha was the big volatility unit. Obviously, Minato can be a problem. Let's see what happens with Minato. Um, the, uh, the, the threat state can become a bit of an issue. Yeah, and there's no, there's no attack buff for, for Dominic, so he doesn't necessarily need to worry about that either. Uh, you just kind of... You just go for the... Oh, he wants to just do skill two. Okay, I... I, I would have saved skill two and just gone skill one. I think he wanted that immediate strip so that uh, he capitalized on it with the, uh, the CR, but I mean, I feel like he's going on to Minato anyways. Oh, defense breaks sitting on top of the Chandra. There's the additional turn. Did good. he get the kill here? Oh, that was almost huge. Three. He could clean that up with Minato. There's an opportunity where he could absolutely clean that up right here. Yeah. Definitely. Boom. Does and get the kill with the Minato. Wow, dude. That was really good from Lightning. Lightning's got an early tempo lead right now, but a clutch little stun on Minato might give Thompson the window he needs to pull forward. Bombs now in the pool, by the way. You want to kind of take it out, but I don't know if now's the time because it's stunned. You got to get. You can get rid of Vanessa's passive this way if you just let it hang. Well, <clears throat> Vanessa still has a passive, nice little additional turn. He needs to land a defense break and then see what Dominic's going to be doing here. Does get that defense break on the Laura, which is very, very uh, important. Bombs coming out. Um, put it on Dom, Dominic. Maybe. Yeah, you Dominic. Put it on Dominic. Ooh, oh, big resist got the dot, here. As she does. Laura, if Laura procs, I now Laura you actually. Wins it. I think you actually want to kill the Shizuka here because Minato is no, going to come No, Laura Proc, it's, it's over already, though. The big skill three comes out there. We're stripping the uh, everything off. Dominic stayed alive, though. Hold on. And that's not 5% either, so he's going to heal. Yeah. There is still game to be had because we don't quit while Minato's in play. He needs a stun on the Minato, oh, gets that stun, it. bombs comes out, and does he land it though? He does that land it, yeah, that's game right there. Wow! That was clean. That was clean there, as heck from Thompson. There was windows of opportunity for lightning, for sure. Um, yeah, that, well, there's a big proc coming out of the lower too, with the skill 3 coming out there. Um, but without the proc, man, without the proc, does lightning bounce back from that? I don't know, but either way, I think Laura should have been in the free ban and not the other pre band options here. Um, yeah, instead hey, of Han, yeah. Thompson. Yeah, that was great. 2-0 from Thompson in the bottom bracket there. That was just some great gameplay. I love it when he picks Triple Oracle. Like, <laughs> it's like Oracles are most of the draft. That was great. Mm -hmm. Very, very good units. Great additional damage. Uh, it, one of the best families out there, to be honest with you. I, I feel like there's, True. there's some good families. Oracles are around number one out there. They even after all the nerfs that they've seen with skill one. I completely agree, man. If we're talking about like the mean of like ability, like the mean of like quality of monster, I think the Oracles might actually have a play for number one. Like to be honest, like there is not a single dud amongst those monsters. Like, what would you even say is the worst one? That's like that's such oh, a hard thing to say. It's well, so hard. For I the get, longest I time, choose. Ciara was the worst one. Uh, but, like, there was also a time where Ciara was the best one. Uh, yeah, you know, of it course, kind it's of the only one there was a time, You know, there was a time where Lima, where Lima wasn't um, incredible or used as much as she was. There was a time where Juno actually... Well, Juno was actually the worst one for quite some time before she got the buff uh, so that she just cleanses and gets the speed buff. Regardless, great family. And now uh, Thompson is moving ahead to the future tiebreaker to decide who the fifth and sixth place is going to be. We've got Lightning seated in for the seventh, eighth tiebreaker. Stick around because that is not the end of the tiebreaker games. We'll be back to the bottom bracket in a little bit. But next, we're going to go up to the quarterfinals bracket. Yep. Going into the quarterfinals. Getting right back into the tournament here. People are looking to pick up their summoner's points, just like Thompson did. Even though he got bumped down here, he still was able to accumulate two more points here, or at least his first two points here, uh, summoner's points in uh, America Summit. So keep in mind, when people are losing, they still have a shot at getting some uh, summoner's points. Yes, they do. And I think next we get to look forward to Topo T versus Zazos, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. That's going to be a good one. I can't wait to yep. see Topo V play another game, man. 
And here we go, Zelda versus. Oh, we're going with Zelda versus Crocodile. I forgot we still we we're still in the the we still have one more tiebreaker game. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, we got to see Crocodile play up against True Whale, so we know we've got that ragdoll in the wheelhouse. Um, let's see if Zelda pay attention to that first match. Are we potentially seeing a ragdoll in the pre -man? In my opinion, to see a ragdoll in a pre -man, it's got to state that you're playing uh, a turn one that you don't want to put that unit like into the universe if you're going to be playing turn one definitely justifies a a ragdoll pre-ban but it looks like zelda's going to be pre-banning out that light lno which got heavy play from crocodile yeah it did it was one of his favorite units appeared in almost every draft that he did nefty's first pick from crocodile solid speed lead and also got him a great win in the last one zelda super quick to reply with nefty's probably biggest enemy the natural predator out in the wild varamos the free-to-play Veramos with a Leo coming out as well. So immediately Zelda stating, you know, he's going turn two. Uh, the rest of his draft is probably going to be in that realm of, uh, you know, kicking it slow. <laughs> keeping, it, keeping it slow, keeping it steady, Crocodile. Uh, chooses to bring in the Laura still with the fast base speed, but wants to capitalize on that Leo passive with Verd. Oh, so, such a great reply. Yep, so Crocodile showing that he could leave the Verd in, uh, leave the Leo in because he's got the Verdi heal. Because we all know uh, that's a that's also like a natural predator to, to Leo is just dropping a Verd and gain too much attack bar in the first place that you tried slowing everybody down, but Verdi heal just doesn't care about your emotions whatsoever. Oh, a Bulwark, a Bulwark here. How do you feel about the Bulwark? There are buffs from Laura, but I think that's, that is it. I hate every bit of it. <laughs> I just, it, I, it, I, don't, it's too, I don't like the Bulver pick. It's too much in Crocodile's play pattern. You know, or what I what I mean to say by that is that it is too much dependent on Crocodile to activate the Bulwark, and it's so optional. There's only one skill that'll do it. Great pick from the Mei Ho Wang. I was actually going to say that I would have preferred it to be a Fire Monkey King, and then maybe pick some oh. sort of cleanse at the end here. Um, but I think he's going to be probably banning the Nefties. Uh, I could also see a ban on the Verd. Uh, this is so got... interesting to see the Bulwark where it is, and then both players justifying it. So Crocodile could have completely ignored Bulwark. Wait, and then he bans out. The Wait, path. yeah, he, all right. Because he, he picked into the Bulwark, so you're right that he's got to get rid of the Bulwark after that Riley pick. Yeah, really, really interesting there. Okay. Yeah, that he definitely had the option to leave the Bulwark alone and but he decided that he really needed that sustain and it, ha it just had to be Riley. Oh no, yeah, the counter he, on Riley Riley He's through. boosting him up. He's boosting up the yeah. bird. Maybe this, all in his, yeah. maybe this is all part of his plan. Yeah, part of the plan. Yeah, that was, uh, I, don't, I don't like that play. <laughs> I just can't help but uh, say that. Gotta it, admit, it could don't like be, that play. it could go so wrong because now Mei Ho Wang is gonna get like a free kill. I, I get what maybe he was trying to do, like a proc there would have been absolutely devastating. I think what he was trying to do is he was trying to boost Nefties uh, ahead of the Veramos. So that way he burns skill two, Veramos gets a cleanse in another turn. I think that might be what he's trying to do. But it was very dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to go with the skill three, get some form of cleanse out there. Get there some it is. form. Here and now we'll see, we'll see Veramos oh. cycle. Not enough to get another turn, and he's low. That's the only thing. Well, he's going to keep staying on that Veramos to get rid of that unit as soon as possible. Mail Wang could be the unit to do it. He just needs yes. the additional, which doesn't pop out here. And there's no death break over here, I just this realized. This bear Leo? Why are we doing this? All right, interesting. This bear uh, Leo know. is crazy. That's a, that's a thing. <laughs> That's, oh that's a my thing. goodness! That's like getting—you got your Leo and your 2017 Leicas like smashed together like a peanut butter cup, you know? <laughs> you got your Best Leica. Best both worlds right there. <laughs> oh, good. there's the additional turns we were talking about with the Fire Monkey King, not able to really do enough to this uh, Veramos. Veramos obviously being one of the main units that Crocodile's trying to get rid of you. Yeah, and and. I do, I do agree that we need to ditch the Verd stat. However, 
with Veramos about to exit stage left, we kind of need Nefty's gone. Oof, stat. Oh, good Skill sustain two. there. So Veramos keeping himself alive right now. Laura looking for sleep, not able to get that sleep here. Is he going to keep hitting the... He doesn't keep hitting the bird. Okay. Please don't. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's barely... Why is this working? Why is this Despair working? It's barely, oh, baby. <laughs> oh, my God. He's almost got bird. He almost has him. Oh, this is a bad time to use skill two because Veramos is about to play. Yep. All right. He's going to stay on the Veramos still. No defense breaks popping out here. Hasco at skill three. A lot of additional damage going to be popping up. Dude, those Nem runes on Veramos are really coming into play right now. Do you see how much attack bar he got off that? Let's see. Yep. Can you get any more? Nothing. No, double crit. Hard to heal. Pushing up the team. I don't think you do. He does go for it. Is the fire monkey going to cut? No attack bar pushback. Is this going to be it? Kill. Get That's it. Confirmed. Kill. That's it. That was such a great timing too, because if if, if Veramos took one turn, it was going to lead to at least at least one more turn, just natively off of his passive. Oh, whoa, whoa, indeed. Wasn't expecting that. Goes right back onto the non-violent, but despair Leo. Mm-hmm. I think you got to be careful here. I don't think you want to push this into torrent I range. I, I I would risk it only because of the glancing. I would do it now just because of glancing on Leo. Yeah, but that defense buff on the Leo is going to keep him alive. Like, the likeliness of him sitting in a torrent range is very, very high. I guess you don't need to take the risk if you can silence him with Nefties, too. So, you know. Yeah, he just has to When I say it. stuff like that, I guess it's spoken like a non Nefties player. <laughs> There's the cleanse. Everybody's looking. Get, we're getting to the healthy range right now. Oh, wait a minute. You, you can get that skill early speed. and just keep pumping the additionals. It's going to be massive. Yes. Oof. Alternatively, he could have skilled two to try to avoid the torrent if he was so so invested in that. I think I think a skill two would have been good. You can get a stun here, too. Attack There's the broken. torrent. It's attack broken, though. Yeah. They get on Vuri. Oh, man. Goes for Nefties instead. Yeah. Uh, I think he that does. was the, the play to go for the Nefties. I think for you, you know for a fact, Vertihill's not going to build that tanky. Uh, Fire Monk King's still going to be a problem. Of course, a lore is going to be a problem as well. Um, he's going to stay on top of the Leo. Okay. Oh my goodness. Zelda is pulling this, pulling this away from Crocodile. He's definitely trying to. Great sustain coming out of uh, Zelda's team, though. There's, yeah, Zelda, Zelda can also get an ignore defense torrent crit on the monkey. We know it happens. Oh, yeah, we definitely do. We also know Fire Monkey King for being a elemental king. Oh, that's a beautiful violent proc. Oh, my word. All right, I see it. off the table. Dude, I miss, I, I, I miss Leo already. Yeah, there's the two-turn uh, slow sitting on top of Mayo Wang. Does get a stun on Camilla. It's not going to get cleansed, but I mean, everyone's going to stay so healthy. Yeah, I don't think Fire Monkey can win this one. I don't think so either. I, I really don't think so. Man, that was just resilience from Zelda, persistence. Where did it? Where did this go wrong for Crocodile Stye? Um, I don't, I don't was know. It? I would have figured he was had it because of the Verti heal. I thought so too, and he was netting so many turns. I, you know, I, man, that was I, Camilla. Camilla was great there. She aged really well into that game, by the way. Yes, with great sustain. Uh, I guess not being able to drop that Leo as quick as he wanted to. No, you know what? It goes back to the Veramos. Um, not being able to drop Veramos when he needed to was was the bigger problem. Veramos provided so much sustain with that Neftis on the other side of the field. Um, True, it worked and, very and very was... well. True, and there was also one, at least one moment where he had skill two with the Nefties and just couldn't use it because Veramos was moving next. Yep. So interesting pre-ban here. Zelda does not want to play up against the bird. Uh, Camilla's going to get the ban coming out of Crocodile. It's, it's so weird to, to be in 2024 and Camilla makes her way into pre-ban. Isn't, isn't that wild? I never would have anticipated that, to be honest. I, it, yeah, Camilla has grown in uh, impact 
semi-recently. Gyo first pick is also pretty cool. Yes, yes it is. Gyo is uh, uh, pesky. It is the pesky Gyo unit we know and, and love. I always underestimate her too. I'm always in a position where I'm like, oh, I can handle that. Or like, I can defense break it, proc into a kill with like Meiho Wang or something. But it's like, no, then she then she cuts me for some reason. And like, you know, I, I can't, I can't, she's too tanky, can't get the kill. My other unit's booster attack bar. She karmas me, she stuns me. Like it's, she's such a great unit. Most definitely. Now, I, I can see why the pre-ban comes out on the Verti heal, because we've got Leo being drafted once again by Zelda. Doesn't want to have to see a Verti heal. Definitely justifies a Ragdoll coming out of Crocodile. Obviously, we've got great synergy with the Riley as well. Zelda showing a, 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 what? A double demon? No way. No way are we seeing a double demon right now. Dois, dois demon. Demon, demise. Uh, this is, this is cool. Crocodile could pick Double up Carlos. Hands. That's right. Double hands. Demount. <laughs> Demount. <laughs> Crocodile could pick a could pick a Carlos right now. Actually, and it'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> like this Beazle is the pub and that's ah, wow. You know what? I I think Zelda's in a pretty good situation right now. But I I think Crocodile's thinking about banning out this Veramos. Yeah, and what's funny too is that he's found himself in a situation where it was Zelda has found himself in a situation where he's fine with all these units, honestly. I, I don't like he's got an answer for each one. He's probably gonna have to ban out the Nefties though, just because I'm I'm detecting Crocodile has lingering resentment towards Veramos, even if it isn't optimal. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh my god, and he's gonna ban out the, the Beast Bub. Beast Bub gets banned, Riley gets a ban, oh. which is totally justified. Removing that sustain from Crocodile. Yeah, and there's uh, no we've sustain got now. an interesting game on our hands right now. We really do. This one's going to be cool. This is going to be a very cool game. Like, very bruiser heavy. No sustain technically on uh, on on either side. No strict sustain. Nana is sustain adjacent, but nothing else. Yeah, definitely. It's still beyond me that Laura, Neftis, and, and maybe not not so much the Ragdoll, but like avoiding the free ban and Camilla getting the free ban in there is, oh, is so that. crazy. Look at that. That's exactly what I'm talking about. She's pesky. You're so right, Stoic. <laughs> That's a beautiful despair stun. Does have a defense break. Ragdoll can take advantage of this unit and pump it out of here. But keep in mind, there is a Nana on the field to save that unit. This is the exact situation that we were talking about when Gyo was first picked. I always think I can handle her. I defense break her. I throw my biggest skill into her, but then she doesn't die. And like she's boosted. And all of a sudden, I've got karma on a unit that I really needed. Yeah, you know, I, every time I see a Gyo, I don't worry too much, but I'm also a same A user where just uh, when you're playing a Gyo, it's like you want to use your skills, but I want you to use your skills. It's great sustain, so. Uh, he's, he's really thinking uh, about great it. Great for me. He was really thinking Whoa. about it, and he did it. That's, wow. That's, that's, that's I don't know why he did that right there, because I, I suppose that the thought process there is that he's going to probably, you know, lose Ken anyway, but... I think he could have stood to, to maybe hang on for one more one more turn. Yeah. Zelda looking so strong right now. He's looking so strong right now. We can't confirm if this is a despair Nana just yet, but we've got brilliant defense breaks in the right places right now. Yeah, uh, they very well-placed defense breaks. Put a little attack break on there just to try to slow down the, the inevitable uh, passing of these units. Lots of damage ticking away at the Laura. You're really starting to feel the no sustain by this point. Yes, yeah, uh, definitely for Crocodile for sure. There's the Despair Stun coming out on top of the Laura. Laura is the unit that Zelda's trying to get rid of right now, so this is looking grim right now for Crocodile. Yeah, J Max says Gyo stunning Keck W. Yeah, it's for real. Gyo. Pretty Gyo crazy. Always stunned. Always. Stuns more than the Veramos second skill. That's how it's feeling right now. Boom, the there you two. have it, man. Oh. Zelda. Oh, it was with, Crocodile. With Crocodile was one of our point leaders at a time for NA. Yeah, a super convincing game. Very That's convincing wild. game here from Zelda. That was great. Yeah, well played, well drafted. Uh, totally justifying the, the Verti Heal being in the pre-ban there, so shutting me up where I wanted to see a Laura and a Neptus get a pre-ban, but instead we get a uh, we get a Verti Heal pre-ban, so 
Sure, like it, 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 it works out, man. It really does. He had it all under control. He had it all under control the whole time. Look at this. That's the moment where we lost the Varamos. Finally, felt like it took a little, a little bit too long. He was able to get too much value off the Varamos for Zelda. And now we're just seeing the incremental value from Camilla, how well she ages into the game, especially when attack power goes up, HP goes down. She's just pumping in the damage, getting those clutch little slows on Meiho Wang too. Yep, and that Camilla was so impactful that she made her way into the pre-band in the following match. And, you know, it, it's like I said, it's so crazy to see Camilla in the place that she is that she needed to be a pre-band because she was that that kind of unit that, that Crocodile just couldn't handle. I, I get it. I understand the trauma of facing down a Camilla and losing to her, you know? That's... It was pretty uh, an impactful unit. We kind of had the meme about her being ruined on optimism, triple optimism or whatever, you know, but that was a moment where she really did well. Yep. Well, our next matches, guys, we're going to be heading down into, um, uh, I'm not going to call it our loser bracket. It's our, it's our bottom bracket where we're going to be working on uh, seventh and eighth and then eventually the fifth and sixth after it. Uh, this is big. These are the, again, the positions that players are trying to accumulate their, um, uh, their summoner's points, so even though they're falling out of that upper bracket, falling down in here, there's still a shot at getting those summoner's points, so these players still working their butts off to accumulate those points. Yeah, I think it's really important to remind people about like how the America's Summit functions with those point totals. It's like, once you collect them, they stay with you, and as they add up, you're going to be like working towards hopefully coming to Los Angeles at the end of this whole America Summit process. Uh, and you know, like Stoic mentioned too, if you'd like to participate in this, you can, and you can participate in the goodwill lobbies that are happening on Wednesdays. And then you can fight for as many wins as possible. That's why this is so cool because that is a cleave environment. And now we're seeing much slower paced games. Yep. It's I, I, much slower paced games. It's so it's so crazy to look at this. We were turned one for so many years, Evan, where the speed lead was just like the, the pinnacle. If you didn't have a speed lead, it's like, what were you doing? What were you drafting? But like turn two play, it's it's so good right now. Turn two's never felt so good, never looked so good with all the, the, the viable units and uh, all the volatility they bring to so many drafts. Yeah, and it's about dang time. I love I love Bruiser. It's about dang time. You know, the meta is so is so right for this right now. Like, it, it, we're seeing all these cool units picked. And, I, you know, I talked to you about the Wind Pure Vanilla. We talked about, like, I mean, even Gyo is kind of satisfied at that environment, too. Uh, it, this is, it's just great. We've seen a lot of Ragdoll today. I, I'm happy about it. And I know it's yeah. really good for you, too, because you've got the box for Bruise. Yep, yeah, I know. I've been Bruiser for life, man, and it, 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 I feel like it's just been a lifetime of struggles for, for me playing Bruiser for so long. I feel so jaded now every time I look at these units and I'm like, this does not win, and then it wins, and I'm like, damn it! You know, it's, it's a me thing, <laughs> is, is what it comes down to. It's definitely a me thing. <laughs> That's great. Oh, man. I, I'm wondering what we're going to see in the next round. I We haven't seen a, a snipe actually work in quite a while i think the last one that we saw today was the cassandra comp i think i think we saw one one cassandra pop off there was also a water demon in there but uh i can't remember i think that one did end up winning so we'll have to see if if we get another snipe or a cleave but for the most part people are really taking their time and they should there's no pressure yeah definitely no pressure at all take your time use up those uh um the, the the draft time use up your turn time as well as much as possible uh but yeah we did we saw our cassandra paired up with a uh water demon belial or bail 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 yes. i think it's bail yeah you're right um, belial yeah and then uh he put his work in there in that match we ended up getting one one shot but cassandra went and did her job uh we see a lot of cassandra kind of countering a uh, juno play where juno gets drafted you bring in like the masha for Heavy damage, volatility, get rid of units as quick as possible. But in that case, we had a Cassandra uh, do that job eliminating the Juno. So a little bit of Mo Long play that that, that was out there, but I think the Mo Long ended up getting uh, uh, pre banned. So I know Mo Long took a little bit of a nerf uh, when Tian Lang took his nerf. So um, still a little bit of one shot play out there, but lots of different play styles still coming to the table here. Oh yeah, so many, so many, so many. And it looks like we might be jumping into Thompson and Zelda for our next game right now. And it looks like we're going to be looking forward to seeing some more of that gameplay, which is great. Zelda just had a really strong game. So pro Zelda's probably still in the zone right now, which is, this is the best, is optimal time to be fighting Thompson. 
Yeah, definitely. If you're in the zone, this is the, the best time to be in the zone when you're going up against Thompson. So again, we talk about Thompson with uh, all the utility, all the things that he's bringing to the table right here. So in my opinion, as long as we don't see an Ada coming out of uh, Thompson, we should have some great play here. Obviously the light Holly Berry showing herself to be a very, very useful unit for Thompson. So hopefully Zelda's paid attention to Thompson matches and can draft accordingly. More importantly, ban accordingly. Um, it's, it's really, really important going up against a player like him. As much as I wanna, as much as I wanna poke fun at the Arda, at the Arda jab, the data supports it. You know, the data supports what you're saying, man. As long as Arda doesn't appear in the draft, Thompson seems to be doing pretty well. I don't know what it is about Artemio. It's like we're talking about how the meta is so supportive of Bruiser units right now, and then when you point your finger at the OG Bruise unit, Artemio, face of the game. He just doesn't fit into it for some reason. I think it's because there's just so much additional damage, so much ignore defense damage, like things like uh, the Miles Miles effect, like Dom effect, even Fang. Like there's just so much that eats him alive. Yeah, well, a great little uh, topic right there to actually talk about when it comes to these bruisers. Let's just highlight three of the main bruisers that we're seeing a lot of action right now. There's Mao Wang with a passive that helps him gain turns. Uh, there's uh, Fang Yen, who also has a passive when he's struck, he gains a lot of attack bar. We have uh, Camilla, who's got great utility to keep herself alive. So Camilla is one of those units that you need to room just a little bit faster um, than those two other units. But these are all bruisers that take advantage of something that allows them to get extra turns. Now, Ada does have a little bit of attack bar in his passive, so... I it's somewhere guess in there. Can be, it's somewhere in there. Just he doesn't do enough that you know what you what you see a Fire Monkey King, Camilla, or even a Fang Yen. What they produce as bruisers just stands out just a little bit more than Ada. You know, you know how you can buff Artemio to make him absolutely broken. You give the you put the stun on his skill one natively, and then you can ruin him on like rage. <laughs> That'd be so sick. So it looks uh, like we're going to be getting thing. into uh, five and six tiebreaker. Uh, we are jumping into that Thompson Zelda match. Mm -hmm. uh, but on that note, on that note, Evan, uh, how about not making Ada broken and making Fermion broken? You know, maybe maybe it's time for his brother to to get a little bit of spotlight. Honestly, it's a good thing I'm not on the balance team. I I do that. <laughs> I would make him broken for you. I'd be like, you, Stoic wants it. Absolutely, he's broken tomorrow. He's broken. <laughs> you you want to know? You want to know when this happens? Is when people open up Summoner's War and it's no longer an Atamiel uh, uh, icon. It, they turn it black and they they rock a Fermion icon. Yeah, and Fermion you're gonna be like, icon. Wow, the times have changed, guys. It's into the Dak days, and Fermion will become broken. I I believe it. I'm speaking it into existence. That's we'll make it happen one day. What would you What would you give him? I there's there's so much that I, I would do with, uh, do with uh, Fermion, but you know what? We'll have to talk about it over over tea later because it looks like we're going to be getting into uh, Zelda and Thompson right here. Zelda and Thompson, here we go for the fifth and sixth place. Let's see how it goes. All right, Brebans coming in here. Has Zelda been watching Thompson's matches? We're about to find out uh, based off this in the band Oh, it's still still Han. It's still a Han getting pre-banned. <laughs> Funny because Thompson's clearly done his homework with the Gyo. Yeah, yeah, Gyo's getting pre-banned out here, which is uh, honestly an excellent pre-ban coming out of Thompson. I do believe Thompson has the same A, but I wouldn't recommend uh, a play style that I bring to the table. I bring a play style of I'm willing to receive a ton of damage and then react after. Thompson's way too fast, has way much more depth than I do, and should be playing a more reactive draft. Not reactive draft, I'm sorry. A more proactive draft. And um, Oliver is just one of those units, man. I, he is, And that's a situation where I really like the fire pure vanilla getting picked, actually. This is the first time where I'm like, yeah, yeah that's a great this is a great point, actually. That's is probably the unit that the fire pure vanilla was a response to, to be honest. Wow, uh, that was a preemptive gap goop with O'Reilly coming in here confirming gap goop was going to do great things. Yes, and you know what? Every single one of these monsters has some form of incidental healing on it. So I think this is actually like an optimal gap gap goop. <laughs> very, very optimal goop happening here. Tessarian, yeah, quite optimal goop. <laughs> I, I actually like the Tessarian. Yeah. Uh, Tessarian's looking excellent. Obviously, Chi uh, Chi Wu Chao uh, looking uh, pretty threatening going up against uh, Thompson, but again, Chow bringing sustain to where the goop gets to uh, uh, capitalize off it. What? Oh, goodness. Mook, Mookwool, 
out of nowhere. Here we go. This is this is something I wasn't expecting. All of a sudden, we're dipping into some control here, but only only I, one just strip. So I I was totally fine with the goop. I don't know how I feel with the mook. Um, <laughs> we, mook, what, mook Wells here. Um, I think there could have been some better options, but we're we're dealing with it. We have it. This is uh, some interesting Thompson drafting here. <laughs> <laughs> Love the goop, not a fan of the moop. I, that's so, that's so funny, dude. Okay, and a very aggressive Beelzebub getting picked last by Zelda. What is happening? I'm so confused. Uh, All right, wait. you know what? I, I've lost myself. I Riley I gets know. the ban. The, um, yeah. Interesting. Okay, this is this is going to be kind of wild. Keep your eyes yep, peeled this, right this now. This is wild indeed. Yeah, this is wild this indeed. Is wild and also, indeed. I, you know, I... I know that the speed lead is impressive, but at the same time, you did pick the Fire Pure Vanilla specifically against it. It does work against the Brad here too, though, so let's see how this goes. With Thompson taking turn one with Mookwool, throwing out immunity on everybody. Going for the, yep, Lance the Lance coming out here too. <coughs> uh, we've got Branding. Brand branding can land, and then we can do something with the Branding, I'm hoping. Big Branding on the Mayho Wang. That's big oh. Branding! What kind of damage? There's no additional turn coming out there. Yes, and on the next Actually, round of combat, on the next round of combat too, we can oblivion up the uh, the Beelzebub as well. Oh, actually, you know what? He, he might he'd still probably come back actually. So that's uh, we'll we'll just we'll just keep working on the Mayo. Yeah, yeah, getting rid of Mayo Wang is definitely a must right now, and I think he is going to do that, uh, which is lucky enough for for Thompson here. Does definitely has to confirm kill. He might, and he will with the Varad here. Oh, one more one more try. Nice confirm on the kill. Uh, and yeah, Beelzebub is normally such a tricky monster to navigate too, because you know not even Tessa can fully help once he's beyond the grave. Um, this is this is a good good spot for Thompson. Lots of control set up. Yeah, you know what? Things things are definitely turning around, and I think even I'm feeling more comfortable about this draft here, because what's happening right now is Zelda's not able to take any turns. Um, obviously, Beelzebub needs to have something die, but there's no form of defense break on the side of Zelda that he can really capitalize on something. Obviously, Justice is a dangerous skill, especially when units are dying, so Chow, it's not it's not over? Oh, it's over! It's over. Alright, Thompson takes round one after mm -hmm. uh, a super interesting draft, man. <laughs> exactly. And, and you were you were right, too. It's like, with, with Beelzebub in play, if it's ruined on Violent, you know, there's a chance you could proc out of it, get a clutch little kill, bring somebody back, and you can start chaining things together, but it was heavily leaning Thompson, obviously. So I get why he scooped when he did. We're going into this. A pre ban on Tessarion, free ban on Riley. No way. Just pre ban on Riley. Oh, yeah. Wait, in a pre ban on Tessarion? In what yeah. world? This is yeah. so strange. We, we're just pre banning on, on PTSD right now. That's what's happening. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's happening. This is total <laughs> PTSD pre bans right now. Oh my God. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Zelda picking what he's most comfortable with with the Gyo occupying first first pick slot right there. Great unit. We've talked at length about her. Uh, you're about to see it again, assuming she makes it into the game. Let's see what Thompson choose to an chooses to answer with right now. Is he going to go with, like, potentially the Oracles again? Maybe he might want to go a little bit more aggressive and finally pick the Han, like everybody thinks he's going to be picking. Instead, opts for turn one stuff. Yep, definitely off to turn one. I feel like he didn't want to take the Oliver. He doesn't want to have to deal with that Mayo Wang again. But I think Mayo Wang still is a good draft for Zelda if you want to bring that to the table. I have no clue what this segment on. Keep in mind, a lot of people have been running like the Despair. So there is a world. This is a Despair segment. This could be a, uh, just a Swift segment. No, stop it. Just <laughs> why is he doing this? I just got oh, He was doing yes, it for I you. Yes, I love it. I love yeah, it. Wait, wait, he's still doing, doing this for me. He's still doing, he's still I already said that. I really like a Seime into a Gyo because you want to press Gyo buttons, but you can't press the Gyo buttons because of the Seime. I am honestly, I'm all for this draft right now for Thompson because Zelda's already stated he's going turn one. Zelda's not going to be, uh, I'm sorry, Zelda's technically going turn one. She's got the Leo. Zelda's playing turn two. Um, he's not trying to take advantage of, of speeds by any means. Uh, I'm a Juno. big fan of Seime. Seime honestly is in a, in a ban realm, in my opinion, of yeah. being Zelda. Oh, yeah. You could even do like Juno ban Bulwark here, by the way, and like just fully counter everything else in a, in a way. 
Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I have no clue what this last pick could be here. Uh, if he wanted to even drop in the uh, that that light Holly Berry is to be playing so much with, he could. Uh, I think Bulver potentially could just get the ban out here, and then you don't don't have to worry about it. Okay, so a Ragdoll gets banned out now, and we were just rocking additional damage with the uh, yeah. with the Laura, which is interesting. I think. Uh, okay. Never mind. Okay, that's not what happened. All right. I I was going to give a lot of favor towards Zelda if he had banned out the uh, the ragdoll here, but Bulverk, I I agree. Bulverk does take the ban, and uh, we have a match. Yes. The only reason I I, I would have done the Juno there. Oh, look at how funny that is. The Juno's the, the screen because she can she can strip to remove everything uh, that's getting that's getting put up on buffs, but then she can also cleanse the karma that's being put on her as well. That's kind of why I like that um, over the Rakuni because we would have been a little light. On, uh, on damage here. Wonder, wonderful additional turn coming out of Laura being able to do that. Full strips, gets a couple stuns out there. Gio, Leo. Keep in mind, Leo, once again, on Despair. Despair standing up the Sammy. But if you own a Sammy, you know for a fact you love the negative effects. You do. You do love the negative effects. You want more of them, actually. You crave the negative effects. No, yeah, you definitely do. So yeah. he could go for the second skill. Uh, or if he just goes for applying dots, like I feel like Vermouth comes off as a bit of a wash, except you know for when, you know, a Curse of Beautiful comes out uh, onto onto Zelda. Um, but still, like I I feel like we're not too worried about the the Vermouth in, in the situation right now. It might be something you want to get rid of to set yourself up, but we're not super worried about. It. And he's trying. So Thompson's being real careful not to feed that Gyo more than he has to. You notice that he he opted to not use the skill three from the Sekhmet just to not fuel the attack bar gain on the Gyo. So we're kind of playing at parity right now. Everything's a little bit slow. We're not feeding anybody. Despair Sekhmet strikes again. Yeah, well, keep in mind, uh, I don't think Thompson cares if Gyo uses that second skill. I mean, that's, it's just more healing coming towards Thompson, and it really puts uh, Zelda in like a weird spot uh, to use that second skill in general. You just kind of use yeah, it as like suppression. That's it. We're, we're not going to be losing any units for a little while. I love this chat, by the way. I, am I tripping or is that Leo on despair? 100% on despair. He is on despair. I love that chat. Yeah, that's exactly what we said, actually. Oh my god, another despair stun coming out of the Gyo. Gyo trying to strip that soul protect. Not going to happen here. Yeah, show, show me the damage, you know, but like I... We're not going to be seeing a monster die for quite some time here. Like we really are operating at parity, and even if, even if the Laura dies right now, she's going to come right on back. Yeah, I think what uh, Thompson's waiting for is an opportune moment to get a curse of the beautiful into a ragdoll to take advantage of a defense break somewhere. Yes, exactly. Arc Alex says, "Can't wait to see every Leo and C1 built on despair now because of this stream." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think America's he's going to stay on top of Veramos and strip that defense buff. No, goes for the defense. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Wait, wait. That was a Despair Seime. Despair Seime? Was that a Despair really? Stun? Is was that what it, we're sorry? Was we just stunned? Dis I, it, Maybe I'm tripping. I'm tripping, dude. Chat. I was looking at chat. Chat, tell me. Tell us. Was that a Despair Seime? Yeah, maybe it was. <laughs> That's so a Despair segment. That's a despair. Wait, it's so, definitely despair segment. That's the second stun she's gotten. Yeah, this is wild. Man, what Watch year out. is this? I don't know where we are. I feel like we're right at the precipice of a new meta right now. We got we got despair on everybody. Folks are starting to realize that that stun chance is just so good. Is this a despair rag? We've known. <laughs> We've known. But I think we're realizing it's good on way more than what we thought yeah. you know and despair got a nerf back in the uh the reloaded update too and it's still just like such a solid room set all right nelly the god welcome to the stream hey zoe what's up zoe oh wow strip despair stun on leo stripping the immunity getting the despair stun wild so that is a uh that's a despair same it, that is so many units built on despair that I wouldn't normally anticipate being on despair right now. Look at the tempo of this game here, Stoic. Like nothing. We, we are at parity, and we've been at parity for so long. We are. To be honest, it's um, we, we might see some units dropping soon with how much time's passing. 
<laughs> J Mac, my paint on the wall just dried. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but admittedly, I'm getting a lot more joy out of watching this than I did at like the peak Molly era of Summoner's War. You know what I'm talking about? Like the Molly Lulu era. Yeah. So getting that <laughs> attack break on top of the uh, the Leo is going to be very, very important for Thompson. I think he has to keep that up as much as possible because that's where a lot of the damage is going to be coming from Zelda right now. Is just that alone. This second skill, I think he can put this onto his uh, segment to keep the skills up there. It goes right back over the segment, and we want to get that third skill up as much as possible. Wow, aiming yeah. for the same oh. A right now. Is that going to be enough to kill? If oh, because the attack break's gone. On both, but unfortunately, oh. he did not. Uh, there is an opportunity here uh, for Aaliyah to get it. Actually, but yeah, Aaliyah's going to yeah, get killed there. It. And finally, well, they need to trade five now. years into the game. One monster is taken down. So if Here if uh, Gio doesn't go down right now, I don't see Thompson uh, winning this match. He has to take out that Gio as soon as possible because now Gio, you know, Thompson needs to respect it and be afraid of it. Oh wow, oh, yeah. the initial turn. Units. He did not care about the counter. He went for the kill, getting rid of the Gio here. I love that choice right now, Thompson. Thompson should be like. It be being a little bit careful here. He doesn't have the support of the same A. Things units are going to start dropping now. Like we took ages before, but now they're about to all just start passing away. There goes Laura. All right, he's got to stay on the Varamos so we can utilize some second skill here. So it's just it's big oh, numbers coming out, but guess what? That Leo's going to be slamming too. Yeah, all of a sudden, Zelda is looking to be in a pretty good spot. Did not get the defense break on top of the Leo, but the moment he's going after the uh, Veramoss first. Big torrent damage. It is going to be enough to drop the Veramoss. There's no sustain on the side of Thompson. None at all. And now we've got the Despair Leo versus the Despair Sekhmet. Let's see who can get Full more stun. strip on top of the uh, Ayaldia. Gets the kill as well. He needs to get the reset here. Does get the he reset. Got it. Can he get the kill? That's the kill, though. Just Despair segment it's versus Despair, despair Leo. Let's go, chat. Here we go. He's got second skill go. available. He's going to reset it right here. It oh my hard. god, segment holds on. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Wow. Here we go. That it was crazy, Thompson. man. 2-0. That was a great game. All got a little bit tons. Got a little bit tense there at the end, Stark. Yeah, tense, dude. That was that was tense. We watched so much time pass there in that match. That was that was wild. That was something. And it, it was uh, yeah. it was crazy because we knew we were at that point where it's like everybody is sitting pretty. You know, nothing's no, we're not losing any units. Everything's looking fresh. But as soon as the same A left the table, people started dropping like flies. And then that, all of a sudden yep. it was blistering pace. That was crazy. Yeah, say she's a, I, I, I know that most folks can't read that message, but I'm right there with you. What am I watching? <laughs> what am I watching? That's what we were saying. This feels like a weird, like breaking point. Like we're suddenly a little bit off meta here in some weird ways, stoic, like with these despair units running around on, you know, despair. No, saving. it's, it's so strange to, to see 2024 turning into that where so many people are just like taking these units that are known to be on swift or known to be on violent and then you find out that everything's built on despair probably has a nemesis if it was missing a will set and just it's it it's just it pops off man it pops off it does and look at this how lucky are we we go right into the next game we got lightning versus crocodile right now again lightning the c3 that's captured all of our hearts uh cracking down on these g3s Yep, that's right. He's been accumulating his points here in today's tournament. The most important points that you can accumulate, the summoner's points. And uh, he, he's kicking it here, man. He's been he's been holding on. He's been keeping up. Yeah, the whole summoner's war fever dream arena. That's what this feels like. Some of these bans and the pre-bans too, where we're pre-banning on PTSD, which is so, so funny to me. Yep. So Lightning's been playing in the same uh, like realm here, uh, and I I can't help but look at this and it's this feels very Conqueror, where this is showcasing the rune depth and depth of units uh, for someone uh, at this rank, where we're seeing just so much Annabelle, so much Acroma, uh, the return of Diana, the return of the Bulwark. Um, 
where Crocodile probably has a lot more uh, uh, in his wheelhouse, showcasing Allura Ragdoll, uh, and then a very well-placed um, Riley and Mailwing. Oh, the oh. Wind Pure Vanilla. Yes, the unit that is like, I just ruined that unit up. I, I really like her, actually. I think this uh, I think this unit's great. I called it the Wind Pure Vanilla, but that's actually the Wind Pudding Princess, which is the functional equivalent of the Wind Pure Vanilla being picked there. I, I do have to say, I really like the play pattern that's being presented by Lightning. I, I think that he, the pick on Bulwark was great. He's a force ban in this situation, too, because almost everything on Crocodile's side, with only two exceptions, just feeds right into him. Yep, going with the Monado. Monado obviously being one of those units that come off as a solo unit, you know, able to handle an entire team on his own um, with Threat State. Threat State just being so crazy. And, and one of the things that people keep forgetting about Threat State is when the Threat State is applied, it kind of acts like a defense buff where you're receiving less damage. Yeah, it does negate a little bit of damage on there. Laura, unsurprisingly, starting us off and Riley quick to follow right after that and shields up for Naruto's dad. Yep, there's the Monado. There's that threat state again. Crocodile's going to be forced to go after this unit. And uh, you can probably watch like the, that chaos ensue with this Monado. If you guys have not seen a Monado, uh, do what he does. Um, it's a very good draft for the Monado, to be honest. Yeah, it is. This is where he, he thrives, actually, because there's not a lot of... Even though there is a lot of wind on the other side, too, they're not the damage dealers, so they won't be what... They won't be the pain point for him. There's also no defense break. That's the other thing that you got to reference, too. Yep. Shield holding up. Diana still looking really strong right now. <laughs> the despair Minato incoming. Yep, doesn't there's need a it. defense break going out onto Ragdoll. Needs to stun on top of the Diana. Doesn't get it. Do not transform, sir. Doesn't transform. <gasps> it gets the Now you can. Anyways, to transform. You can and if you take want advantage to. of it. Of a defense break. Let's see how much damage we get off of this thing. Oh my goodness gracious. Good googly moogly. That's crazy. Yep. Ragdoll's gonna get smoked here. Looking very good for this E3 player up against a point leader in NA. I uh, before we down. Truly, I don't want to say it, but this is kind of over. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Uh, I mean, Monado is gonna be a problem and he's going to remain a problem. That defense break on the Lord just healed the deal. Here comes Diana oh. to close out the game, and Crocodile knows. Lightning yep. has struck the crocodile just swimming along. That's poor little, great job, Lightning. Really showing us, like, he came here to play. Came here to get points. That's right. Lightning beats water. We know Lightning this. beats water. It's true. Thank you, Ari. Good googly moogly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get into round number two here. Pre-bans from last time. Eleanor, Camilla, they're now available. New pre-bans getting locked in right here. Yeah, here we go. Let's see what's uh let's see what's picked instead. If we're picking based on uh if we're picking based on PTSD, what do you think is gonna get pre-banned? Uh I don't think you pre-ban a Diana or Monado. To be honest, <laughs> I, I don't think so either. But if we're we're pre-banning on PTSD, <laughs> Diana, <laughs> Diana gets the pre-ban. Love it! I All love right. it! I love this tournament stoic. This yeah, is so yeah. good. I mean, Holy. like how maybe that just comes down to um, Crocodile thinking how limited lightning is here. Annabelle's coming right back out. Laura Oliver, I love these first two picks coming out of Crocodile. A very quick Akroma into Riley. This is the top three units lightning's been drafting over and over. I feel like maybe Riley would have been the pre-ban over a Diana, unless he just didn't want to have to worry about Diana, period, as a counter to whatever Crocodile's going to be drafting. He's going full control here. Yo, full control and a lot of AOE representation too. Uh, now I see why he wanted to pre-ban the Diana. Leo here is, you know, I, I Leo hasn't been the pain point, so it's okay. But to me, I actually would have preferred a different unit there. Well, so what I think here is uh, Lightning's going to drop in the Leo and just slow everything down where Crocodile is trying to take turn one, get full control here. And he was just trying to bring things back. Leo comes off as a ban, but then again, there's a Verti heal here. Um, Verti mm -hmm. heal gets the ban because maybe 
I, gu I guess Lightning kind of called that. I love the Verti Heal ban, and um, Leo makes it through. So there is a little bit of lack of sustain on the side of Lightning. Obviously, Annabelle is there. Um, let's see what happens. Annabelle and, and, and Juno offering sustain. Yeah, this is curious because we, we don't have the opportunity to put any of these units off tuning just because both Laura and Charlotte are on Will, which, by the way, impressive for, for Laura. That's pretty cool to make it so fast and also on a set of Will. That's pretty dope. Here we go. Things are operating about as you would expect them if there wasn't a Leo in play. Let's go. Big boost. And coming not a out full attack or pushback on top of that Annabelle either. Uh, but Oliver's got something to say about it with the third skill, soaking up that attack bar here. Let's see this Akroma. Akroma early. So the damage isn't too bad with the Akroma. It's more important that Akroma stays tanky than it is to deal damage um, uh, for how you would uh, ruin it. Well said. And I, given the way the day has been going, Stoic, I would not be surprised if the Oliver was on despair. Ah, yeah, I know. Like, us despair, Oliver. We've got a confirmed despair water Ryu, though, with that uh, stun going out onto the Annabelle. Mm hmm. Yeah, we could get a re sleep. You could go for a re sleep just to fuel up again. Tries for it. Doesn't okay, get nice it. Little proc there, but I think Annabelle needs to get that sleep into an initial turn. Not going to be happening here, though. Big hit coming in. Still capitalize Ooh. on it. Another despair stun from Water Ryu onto that Annabelle. Annabelle, obviously the unit that Crocodile's really trying to get rid of here, but it looks like Lightning might be able to um, get Crocodile down a unit trying to get rid of this Water Ryu. Yeah, and then by the time his turn comes back around, the Water Ryu is going to die to Dot, and he goes for the free skill too, and lands it on the Charlotte. No way, Lightning's doing a phenomenal job against the point leader Crocodile, because this Laura looks like, Laura, I'm sorry, Charlotte looks like it's going to be dropping here. He is doing such a good job. Lightning is really thriving over here. Like, ever since he made it to bottom bracket right now, like, he has been doing such a great job, actually. Yeah, for the record, I will say tournament play compared to ladder play is very, very different. Um... It's not like you're looking for these meta picks to come out immediately like you do on, on the ladder. You see a different play style coming in. You get your pre-ban, of course. Uh, so it is great to see uh, Lightning as a, as a C3 on the ladder, but out here in tournament doing so well because it is, it's played different, uh, it's drafted different, and he's, he's thriving in it. He is, and you know, that could actually explain what we saw in his first round play. It might have just been one of those adjustment periods, to be honest, like getting used to tournament play. And look at that. Lightning, our C3 representative, 2-0 against Crocodile. That, that, that's absolutely insane. I, I give so much credit to this man right here. And this is why we encourage a lot of people who, doesn't matter what your rank is, are, I, I'm going to too far with that like you know fighter ranks and, and challenger ranks like okay just like, set a standard <laughs> but uh um, we know he, don't you know what shy he means. away yeah don't 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 shy away if you want if you want to compete you can compete and i think crocodiles are, uh, not crocodile i'm sorry um lightning's a, a great lightning. example of that the man's c3 right yeah yeah lightning is a great example of that he is absolutely push yourself. You know, you might be ready for something that you don't necessarily know that you are when it comes to this. You know, it's like we've got our C3 who's taken down G3s right now. Uh, it's like, you know, he knows his box. He knows his draft. Played that really, really well and brought sustain against, you know, when there wasn't sustain on the other side, too. Like the dude picked really, really well. So I'm excited to see more of him in the future because um, I think we should remind folks who might be joining us a little bit late they're playing for points today so this is not the end of their america summit run by any chance by any means at all they could still make it to the finals in la and here we go just like that we populated the bottom half of the leaderboard with crocodile taking eighth with one point lightning at two zelda at three and thompson at four yep that's right and uh just just for the sake of everyone getting a nice little understanding here of the summit so people who didn't get to participate in the first month you know, you can participate in the second month and still be able to stay in uh, like the running of things right now. So Crocodile known as one of our point leaders, he was in first at a, at a point as well um, uh, for the NA side of things. He's currently sitting here with only one Summoner's Point accumulated. So this is just a great example. If you missed it on the first month, come into the second and you can just get right back into it. You just got to make your way into these monthly trials and earn these Summoner's Points to really keep yourself alive in the summit. So if you missed out the first month, don't be discouraged. Compete for the second month as well.
Yeah, don't let don't let the time stop you. You can still go in and enjoy uh, what is left of the 2024 America Summit, the second of its kind. By the way, we've only had one before it. Here's our winners bracket. We get to look forward to Topa V versus Lana right after this brief 10 minute break. Stick with us.
Hello everyone and welcome back to the summit where we are back in the top bracket after a brief take in the bottom bracket. Stoic, this has been quite the tournament so far, man. It has been and we get into, I dare I say, the more exciting part of the bracket. I don't want to put everybody down on the lower side of the bracket, but it's definitely an exciting part of the bracket that we're getting into right here. Oh yeah, especially when we got folks up here like we got Topa V ready and waiting to do his next game too, like against Zazos. So th there's a lot of heat up here. You know, you thought that the, the bottom bracket was fire? Just you wait. We're about to see some really cool games right now. So we're going into the quarterfinals and then we still got the semis and the finals ahead of us. So there's a lot of tournament left. Yep, I believe that's Lana, I believe. So yeah, Topa V versus Lana in this match right here. Oh, you're right. I'm so forgetting we'll the, you're right. I'm forgetting the order. Thank you. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, Pre-band's coming out. Tope with first pick. It's been it's been a minute since Tope V's had a chance to play tonight, but he's coming back it's in true. here. Hopefully, he didn't get a little rusty. <laughs> it's true. I think like two two and a half two and a half hours. I think since we last saw, last saw Tope V, we've had we've been at it for quite some time now. Oh, I'm lightning! Sure Salvi, Salvi, lightning! Salvi, no, you were great. Muito boa. Oh, that's lightning. That's awesome. Lightning did a phenomenal job. Yeah. Well done. It's been awesome Chimo. to see Muito lightning perform boa. here. Muito boa. Topa Seja V with the Shizuku first pick. Yeah, we got the Shizuku first pick. Juno and Joa Jong Jong Nam Jong 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 Nam Jong Jong Nam. I'm never yeah. gonna get that right. We haven't seen him in a while. I think you got it. I think you got it pretty good there. Something like that. It's not as easy as Gap Goop. <laughs> it's true. It's not not as easy as Gap Goop. Topa has a great response to the Juno in the Masha, and like you know, you can never really turn your nose up at a Rakuni. Yeah, I think Rakuni is definitely a fair pick here. I like the Rakuni. Um, I think Rakuni is also really good against this uh, uh, Water Thick Boy. Um, you know, it's Water Gap Goop is is what this is. <laughs> yes. Yes, water. It's a water goop, exactly. Water goop. It's a watery <laughs> <That's> goop. A... <laughs> I guess we'll have to get used to it, especially if um if Gapsu is going to get more representation in the meta right now. Yep. Oh, double Valkyrie. We usually see a lot of people opening up a uh, a draft like this. Vanessa, Camilla, showcasing you know a thirty three speed lead, uh, a Camilla bruisery style of play here. Um, Oh my god, oh, is that too go. early? Or, or no, no, is that... I mm, I, Yo, I don't know. We're good. We're good. I love we're it. Good. We got three <laughs> instances. We got three instances, I think, of passive healing. I think, you know, so I think this should be good. And then also, technically, Cassandra's got some healing once she comes back. Once her passive I intervenes, she's got the needs vampire. To be the ban, though. Yeah, she's gonna... Oh, absolutely. She needs to be the ban. 100%, yep. I think. Yeah, I don't think Topa and has I a response maybe... to the Cassandra. If I was Lana, I'd maybe take out the Masha. I could also see trying to take out. No, I think I think I'd take out the Masha. Although I wouldn't, I wouldn't fault him if he took out Ragdoll either. Yeah, Masha, uh, Cassandra, and and Ragdoll is gonna get the ban here. Uh, I actually think um, Masha, I think should have got that, got the ban here. But I guess Ragdoll showcasing enough threat, a lot of attack bar for Topi to cut in front of his G3 counterpart Lana. Let's yeah, we'll see out. how much that comes back into play here because the Masha could get a nice little snipe in on the Juno early. Uh, but, you know, there's no attack buff to kind of add that, though there will be in Shizuka's pool after we proc as a fast. Yeah, but is this a dismounted Masha? It is a dismounted uh -oh. Masha. Oh my word, that was a lot of damage right out the gate. It really was. Beautiful branding sitting on top of this Vanessa. Uh, I think you give it back to the goop. It, give it to the goop when in doubt you give it to the goop or you give it to yourself just so you lap back you know either's fine yeah speed buff would have been nice on top of the raccoon as well all things coming out here defense breaks uh branding effect coming out as well uh do we change target to the juno i, I think we, we do may. yeah i think you can get a clutch kill here Forty-five thousand was that number by the way <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that was some really big Not damage. I think Topa V needed to drop that Juno here, but you know what? Rakuni's got Rakuni's got turns. Yeah, let's check the check the crit damage on this Rakuni. Boom. Ah, In not, enough. <laughs> not enough, but that was wishful thinking too. Oh, oh but the additional turn we'll is it gonna time. be it. 
finally gets rid of the Juno. It's exactly what Topavi needed to do. Juno's going to drop here. It's going to make things a little bit easier for him. Uh, Camilla still is a big issue in my eyes. Yeah, it took three turns to get rid of that Juno. That's so funny. No stuns. Gapsu's really trying his best, though. Let me tell you. He really is. That's a great branding. The damage is really good on the goop right now. <laughs> it is good on the goop. TM. TM. <laughs> Wait good a minute. The, I think you bring the, the Masha back, and then you pump the Vanessa. Yeah. Oh. No crit. Missed right. crit. That was anticlimactic. I was really later. expecting some. <laughs> I was really expecting some big damage there. Me too. I was like branding effect. This Vanessa's gone. That was just like a couple hundred off from what the Raccoonie hit for. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was not no no bueno. But obviously, there's some passive play in there, not dealing as much damage because um, the passives do not take effect when it comes in as just a spirit form. So Camilla is really the danger right now. We got Camilla and the Jungnam. That is uh, like just being a, a pain for Topa. If he can't get rid of one, if not both, he does not age very well into this game. I think that's the match, to be honest with you. The revive on the Juno brings back a volatile unit that Topa V needed to get rid of, got rid of, and now it is back because he was so close to getting rid of that Vanessa, and then he failed to get rid of it with the big miscrit on uh, on Masha. Yeah, he needed it. He needed it there. Needed a crit. Wouldn't have been enough to kill, but like, it's just too many missed opportunities here. And like, the sustain that's provided from that team is crazy, and there's not enough damage over here. There's, like, we've got Gapsu's second skill, but I'm not seeing a very clean way to get rid of this Camilla in the long term otherwise. Yeah, correct. That that remains one of the bigger problems for Topofi to deal with. And like, his two main issues he's trying to address is the uh, Vanessa and Juno, just so he can get full use out of his uh, Shizuka. Yeah, he can go ahead and take away that freeze. If we can just kill the Vanessa or the Juno. I would start going for the Juno only because it's the one thing that's keeping Shizuka from using her third skill right now. We're not able to use all things as long as Juno is here. And we still got four turns of cooldown left on that on that revive. Is this gonna be enough? He's got he's gotta go yeah. for it to try and take the, the Vanessa out. The brain effect might be what it takes. What? Maybe with a crit? What? Yeah, I know. Opt to go okay. for the uh Camilla. Interesting. Thank you. Gets another there kill we here. go. The goop to take out the Vanessa. Oop. Still nothing. Dude, we have no like there there is no damage for Topa. Lana is looking pretty good. Lana's looking very good right now. He should in he should go for the increased cooldown time on the on the Shizuka. Yeah, I would skill one all day. I don't think there's I mean, it's not a bad idea to go for a skill too, but I'm well it gets cleansed up anyways. Yeah, he's got two auto cleanse in the Dokebi Lord and also the Makuni. Oh man, that's a beautiful additional turn here. Looking for a big freeze on top of the problem max resistance Rakunai. It just feels like the the Jongnam is is hitting these freezes when the goop can't. There we go. Yep. He Progress has to use that second made. skill there. Yep. So we'll see what happens. So the second skill, it does provide a lot of damage here for for Topa. Does get a nice stun on top of watery goop. Big all things coming out here. Only a branding effect landing on top of Camilla. It does get his defense break. So let's see what kind of damage he can put out right now. Uh, needed the additional turn. Doesn't get it. Holy! Oh, everyone's starting to hit really hard with his attack buff. Give it to the goop. Yeah, you saw Give that? it to the goop. Give it to the goop. Okay. Gave it to himself. Boom! Huge I hit. To see the goop. Hit more goop than the monster did already. Hit more than the Masha did on the Miss Crit. Just Wait, the that Goop's still in front! The Goop's still Give in front! The oh, no kill. Okay, never mind. He did his best. Is, Are we here? feeling the crit? Oh, oh. there we go. He gets, he gets enough, though. Alright. Um, I, I I think... This is this is tough. This, honestly, this is tough. Like, I, I want to say the Goop has it. That's, that's Alright, not bad damage. You know what? I think the Goop has it. With that skill too, he is able to get through Camilla's damage reduction on crit. You know, since they can't crit. So right yeah, now it's, just, it's actually it's looking all out it, damage. It's looking Topa all day. Yep, it really is. So here's the defense break. Goop with attack buff. Defense breaks off now. Well, this that could be it. 
Oh. Close Definitely two. Up. Definitely. And up. Shizuka. Wow. Takes what a kill. long match. So many bruisery, bruisery matches out here uh, in, in the summit right now. Oh, my word. Yeah, very bruiser heavy. These are the teams that these players were aching to pull out during the, the goodwill lobbies or they were just looking forward to when they were having to cleave to rack up wins to get here. Yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, obviously, in the uh, the Wednesday goodwill lobbies, um, there's a there's a one hour time limit for that, that goodwill room, that lobby. And uh, players, obviously, the, the slower you play, the more bruisery you play, the longer the match is going to be. The longer the matches are, the, the less time you have to, to get more wins in there. So they're letting it all out now. They've been they've been all bruisery pent up, and it's all coming out here in the, the bracket matches for the monthly. The math checks out. Let's see if PTSD bans make it into this pre-ban phase, too. A goop. Let's get a goop pre-ban. Ah. They got a goop. Get the goop. Oh, but that, fire, that's a very fire, good pre-ban for Topavi. I forget her Summoner's War equivalent name. I'm so used to calling her Fire Galatrix. Cassandra. Oh, wait. What, what is her name? I only know her by Galatrix. Galatrix. What is a Galatrix? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that. What is it? I'll Google that. That is the song. Uh, what is it? It's forever, Cassandra. <laughs> it's just yeah, exactly. It's the fire, Cassandra. Huh. All right, Topa V. He goes Juno and Oliver. I think oh, this is gladiatrix. A great it's oh, it's a it's a gladiator, gladiatrix. Oh, so I just uh, I did a I did the the stoic thing and mispronounced it. We moved it again. the L. <laughs> I just moved the L. The L was still there. <laughs> oh wait, I forgot to check what her name is. Uh, Federica. <laughs> she's oh, the Fed. Yes. Yep. Yep. Federica. Yeah, she's a Fed. She. It's the Feds. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh man, I spent so much time on my Google search that I uh, I forgot to see who's being picked here. But honestly, everything is looking according to plan. Topa is going for turn one. Little uh, some speed leads picked. Uh, he's got the All Juno. Right. Hear me out, Evan. It's looking good. Yeah. Quad despair units right now. Despair Juno, Oliver, Sekhmet, and Chandra. That could be a real thing, man. Despair Oliver is the most <laughs> frustrating. I've talked about this before. I just find. Because Oliver doesn't get that that many fewer turns if he's ruined on despair, to be honest. Oh, the Douglas. The Douglas. If only Alan were here to see that. He was calling for a Douglas pick during the fighter tournament yesterday. And mm -hmm. here it is. It's actually pretty good yep. here, too. Yeah, I don't think Douglas is going to make his way through. Because um, we've got two reset units in the form of... Uh, uh, Oliver and Sekhmet, which is going to be fine for the Viva Chill. Uh, the Nana is showcasing a situation where Top V may you lose a unit, uh, so that's going to be justifying the um, the Nana. Uh, but I, I think Douglas is just is banned. Yeah, I agree. You can't you can't let the Douglas persist here because there's only so much that a Chandra could do in that situation. Yeah, it's out. Interesting that yeah, Nana got the ban. Yeah, I was actually expecting one of the reset units, potentially the Oliver, uh, to get the ban here. But Nana's going to get the ban. Uh, I think when Topa V inevitably loses a unit to the Viva or potentially uh, Masha, you know, Masha being a great counter to the Juno, uh, we'll see what happens. But there's that reset. Viva's not going to be able to use the uh, skills. Not at all for the time being. And then he's got the Oliver to follow suit. This would be a great time. If you were to be so bold... You could go for the Masha, could soak up the attack bar. This is the one chance that effect can still I do the thing. Got, got the cooldown time, and that that's what really, really mattered there. You can't let that defense break go through. You'd be missing a unit. He's going to be forced to hug the uh, segment to keep that unit alive here. Yeah, seriously, that was a great, great shot from Topa with uh, with the Oliver there. He just saved himself his segment because of that move. Yep, going for a full team strip, which is definitely the way to go. Big second skills coming out. Defense break sitting on top of the Masha. Looking for a attack by reduction on top of the uh, um, uh, watery goop. This is looking like a dismounted Masha. 
Now the attention is going to get moved to the um, Cassandra, I believe. Unless we can get a reset on top of the Cassandra, because I know that third skill for Segment did go to the Viva. We, I don't think we've seen an, an additional third skill yet. Oh, we have third skill right now. And uh, yeah, I think Viva exactly. takes it. Okay, so Viva's going to take it again for second skill. So uh, I do think you focus in on a um, a Vanessa. Yeah, we got to we got to get rid of the Vanessa's third skill or the Vanessa herself. Either we'll do at this point, whatever Topa V's feeling right now. Can Lana make something happen here? It's looking pretty tough. The Oliver is actually being, you know, very, he's a huge block for Lana right now. It's just yeah, being so, so what's happening right now is Topa V's going to use the Viva to use up the Vanessa passive, or the Vanessa third skill, and then take out the Masha. He's trying to wait so that way she doesn't come back on the beast. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Pop out the defense. Because he's going to have Chandra's the segment and the Oliver to keep the Vanessa passive back after, you know, gets rid of the Masha, who's the main threat damage. Chandra has been getting a lot of very well deserved attention right now. What a good kick. Protecting somebody, AoE slow, like, pretty stellar. Yep, it really is. Look at this. Oh, never mind. It was a resist the attack bar, um, but of course, getting the cooldowns on the uh, Vujo. Vujo is going to drop down once again. So is the uh, watery goop, and there you go. Topa V gets the 2-0 on Lana. Well done, Topa V, man. It is so good to see him back. Oh yeah, Topa is playing so well. That was a clean, clean round from him. Yep, it really was. So great plays by him. I'm happy he's enjoying it. I'm happy he's here for the summit because he was not here last year to uh, participate in the in the summit. He did not take part. Yeah, he didn't. And now we're going to get to see more of him because he's moving on to the semifinals right now too. And we still have True Whale's game as well. You know, it's been yep. a, been a while since we've true, seen True Whale play in this tournament, and he's coming up in the next one. True Whale versus Zazos. Yep. Drew Will versus Zezas. Zezas once again being uh, the Latin American side of the summit last year. Um, the point leader going up against Thompson, who won it last year. Um, you know, and then there, then there's True Will. True Will actually didn't do so hot last year. I can't remember um, where True Will fell last year, but I, I feel like it had something to do with Raigeki or or Faras last year. Uh, whatever the situation was, um, maybe one. Maybe have, I think I saw Raigeki hanging out much better chat. showing stuff. I think I saw oh, yeah, Raigeki right, hanging out in the chat. Maybe he can answer. <laughs> if it was his fault, maybe he can answer. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Love that. Here we go. We're going into Zazos versus True Whale. Yep. True Whale being like, he's, he's got the spotlight, man. This guy's got the attention. He's been an absolute powerhouse. Um, it was it was so crazy. Once again, with the Wednesdays, uh, he was only pre-banning a, a Fire Frankenstein. So... It, it's so crazy to see him as a as a point leader, not really caring about the pre-ban, but caring about the pre-ban here with a uh, Chandra pre-ban here. Oh yeah, we've all seen what that Chandra is capable of. We've seen a lot of him today. Yep, in a very fast water Ryu. If this is a swift water Ryu, I am not a hundred percent sure uh, what this is built on. It makes me want to build a Chandra. It makes me debate it as well, to be honest with you. We'll the see. the we'll hug see. is just so useful. There's so much utility out of that man. Especially, like, it just feels like his despair stuns work so well. Uh, if you can take advantage of somebody who's forced to use an AoE skill, um, hit the hugged unit, and then he just, like, despair stuns him. It's, it's so crazy. It is great. And we haven't even talked about his speed lead. Like, uh, the utility I is just know, so yeah. there. You know what we haven't oh. seen? A Miles and a Veladrul, and we're seeing it now. These are There's a lot of new units being picked here. That's also the first Ashir of the day. Oh yeah, first Ashir of the day, you know, known to be very, very fast unit. A very fast draft for True Will. We Have we seen this play style yet from True Will today? I think, I think this is it. Um, the first time we've seen this here. We saw him pick Zibala with his fire brother, but we didn't get to see oh, him you know pick what? something Wait this ready. Uh, True L wrapped up a draft with Water Ryu Chang Pan, so that I guess that would make sense. Yeah, we saw him pick it in in the opposite order. Oh, oh the big big can resist. Etna, can, can Etna wrap up what Sekmet couldn't? Did you see that damage? 
Did you see that damage yeah. on the Bella what was, with, what was that about? I don't know, what but was, uh, we did drop a unit here. Chung Pung does, does go down. Um, punishment's coming out. Looking for a defense break. A little bit of sustain now with that second skill on Bella Jewel. A little Sorry, bit of healing, a little bit of sustain. Bella Jewel right now? I don't know. What the Bella Jewel's taking an absolute beating right now. He's going to finish the Bella here. I can't believe he's still 4.6. Yeah. You know what? High. I just don't think it was a... Uh, that might have just been a speed-heavy Bella Jewel. And not so so much tanky. Because it, it, it should have handled the... Uh, that damage from the Water Ryu a lot better, unless Water Ryu just pumps that hard. Yeah. Uh, he might. Yeah, there goes the Ethnauts. The units definitely take down here. Resets gets the kill on top of Water Ryu. Definitely not over okay, for either one of these moving. players. Things are uh, moving right now. That's a good right way now. to see a match end. <laughs> Misses the bomb on the Miles, and right there and then. I can't help but look at that as the, uh, the, the big uh, uh, door, you know? Uh, you know what? Yeah. He has to go third. He has to go third. <gasps> Doesn't go third. By the way, there were no crits the first time, and there's only like one crit from the Ciara. She's not lapping as much. That attack, that attack break is really useful. Not the stun though. You don't scoop. Don't scoop, Zazos. What? He's alive with the attack break and Bob. Yeah, but I think the Bob. dot is going to be enough here. Boosts up the CR. CR can plant bomb in the second match. Does get the bomb, and that that's game, right? Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> that was scary. But, uh, that, that should be game right there. That is game. Wow. Oh my god, that was close. That was really, that got a little close there, Stoic. True Whale ended up taking it, but heavens to Betsy. That was a very close match. Extremely close for, for True Whale on that one. Okay. PTSD pre-bans. Let's do this. Yep, that's uh, that's definitely what's gonna happen here. Is uh, the pre band's gonna be the stuff that people don't want to go up against? I believe. Okay, no. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> the more would have traumatized me. That much damage being done. Skill one, four K. That's crazy. Laura Neftis pre bands make a lot of sense. Zez asked for the first pick. Are we gonna see a uh, speed lead uh, potential uh, contest turn one? Maybe a 33 could be a Vanessa Oliva. Could be Vanessa to start off. It's looking a little paused. Uh, looking a little looking frozen, a little to be honest. Oh, there we go. A little mm -hmm. paused. A little paused. Looking a little bit paused right now. Now we're going back in. Could be a Vanessa. I don't, I don't dislike a Vanessa first pick here. Yeah, I think of Vanessa is a great first pick coming from Zezus. Okay, okay. It's a cigar. Cigar is in that realm still. With Ciara and... Um, oh my god. I I know this unit. The, the fire um, uh, puppeteer is... Um, gar. It's not yeah, I, I know there's, the, the Meister, one, there's right? Bala, there's CDs or like Sakandis or something like that, or Ligma, I think his name is. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. <it's> <laughs> <But I'm... laughs> really? You're really grabbing up well, there for something. It's, <laughs> like, it's something like <laughs> It's definitely something I can't I I don't even know. I'm so I, whatever I thought it was, I'm I'm just I'm way off now. Zima. It's Zima. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yes. Was a, yeah, there it which is. is kind of, which is kind of like Ligma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Zima. I knew it was something. They're all kind of along those lines. Smicer. I hardly know her. Guy Zima. <laughs> I would love to see a Smicer. I don't think we're going to see a Smicer. <laughs> oh no. Whoa, it's the oh, no, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I would have oh. loved that. The goop. Wait, gap goop. The goop's back. The goop. You know what? I don't like the goop at all. <laughs> I don't like it if we're banning I, Juno. Yeah, I don't like the goop at all. Um interesting. I have no clue what feeling. we're doing with this one. Uh oh. Well, you know what? Yep. True whale knows his box better than anybody. And at okay, the very, very on. least, 
There yeah. is a lot of healing on both puppeteers for our skills. But it only procs off of enemies. It only procs off enemies. Is it really? Oh. I, don't I think know why it I does. It Let's see. Let's see. I believe it is only enemies. I, I think you're right. Uh, a, cro a chroma gives some heals, right or no? Does she like to? Does she heal in the past? Uh, I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. It's just it should be just anti correct We banned it out. We, it, so true will banned out the the main source of heals. Now Zazos taking good control of the game right now. Look at these debuffs coming out right now. Big damage yeah, confirmed. Right no now. heal. Oh. oh my goodness! Yeah, Zazos just yep. nailed that Round draft. Two. That was like such a such a great draft. Pivoted to turn one, took full advantage of the game. That was actually, that was a statement round for him, to be honest. I would have preferred the Dark Puppeteer. I think yeah, anything else. I think, I think maybe I, the plan for the goop, I think the might have fallen apart a little bit there. Yeah, yeah. I did not like the goop there. I... That's a question that I'd like to talk about. Is like Zima what threshold? Pre like, Zima prebit. Uh, what quantity of of incidental healing do you need before goop becomes good? Uh, I you think know, you like, need a Riley. Need to be honest, if someone drafts a mm -hmm. Riley, I think a goop is totally justified. Mm hmm. It's like one Riley, or I think otherwise you need at least two. I'm gonna say 2.5. What do I mean by 2.5? A 2.5 is like a Meiho Wang, where he like heals on skill two. You know, you need like a 2.5 unit I, healing. I was 100% expecting to see a Wajet here, giving us the speed lead and pretty much what Escher does, kind of. Could still be. Could still. It would have be. been really nice to see the Wajet in there, and then not a C. Well, CR is fine. CR is fine, but I, I think we could have wrapped up the draft a little bit better um, if we saw the Wajet there instead of. Um, Escher, uh, Ciara could have stayed, but then we could have brought some better units and not feeling like we needed the uh, a second speed lead in the form of uh, Smoth. Oh, he's thinking. Oh, we are. At least banning, we didn't. We are banning we that Hay Goopy gang. there. <laughs> yeah, good thing. We are banning yeah, that Hay, Hay Gang. Yeah, Hay Gang is 100% getting banned out here. Um, Triple Revenge Verd's oh, coming into this. the picture right now. I love this pick from Zazos, actually. Triple Revenge Verd is exactly what the doctor ordered. You know what? I think Zazos has this. If if Verd can proc, he's got it. I don't think Verd procs. I think this is... Re oh, just... Yeah. yeah. He mm. actually might... He, he... Okay, so there's a situation where he does have this. If Masha can attack and get the immunity on... And like maybe do some big damage to Ciara or something like that. He's he's got it. Potentially. Let's see what happens. We got the boost. Ooh, despair, despair stun, stun but... on. Mm. Bomb. Oh Bomb. my goodness! Misses. That's the second time. Ciara. He has to do third. He has to do third. Bro. He has to go first. Okay. Bro, that made me okay, say, okay. "Oh my goodness!" That was so crazy. The proc into Ciara. The prophecy has been foretold. Zazos found the window. And he is taking the greedy approach and waiting for Cigar to take his turn to lock down the Ciara. Oh, he knew he could lap. Yeah, that was it. That was so well played. He knew I, he could I think lap. we needed to see a Ciara third skill to reduce attack bar of everybody there. Um, I, it, I think Ciara still would have died no matter what. Oh, so oh much my. damage. Oh. Masha taking full control here. Zezas taking down True Will. That's. Insane. Zazos with the serious plays. Absolutely genius. That was so well done. And with the patience, Stoic, he took pause. You know, when he knew that he could take down that unit, he was like, no, you know what? I can do you one better. I can lap. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Um, a lot of credit to him in that first match. Uh, it really was good. Uh, good for Zazos. Um, God, I hated the goop in the first match, though. <laughs> goop I know, was, I know. Goop was not that wasn't in the right it. place. That was not it. That was not it. You can see, there's there's definitely a threshold, and I'm banking on I think 2.5 or one Riley. That's how many units you need in game in order to make it like good.
in order to make him good. So that means that oh we've God, got we our... Oh my God, we have to do another tiebreaker. <laughs> we've got our third, fourth tiebreaker oh, man. between Lana and True Whale populated. Yeah, that's uh, we, we, we've got to do that one down there. That's right. I forgot about that. I, I just Lana realized I actually think that's what we do next. Future. I just Did realized you? I accidentally predicted the future there, Stoic, because I was like, you know, we're seeing, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing that versus, uh, we're seeing, I called out this game earlier. I said True Will versus Lana. I was like, whoa, okay, we're seeing it. Ah. That's crazy. I don't know how oh, I predicted it. We're doing it. It's we're here. Doing it in the we're doing breaker. it. Hey, no, you don't, dude. Better late than never. There's still plenty of game left to be had. We've got the tiebreaker. We've got the... We got the semifinals as well, and the finals. There's still plenty of tournament to be watched. Zazos plenty of goop can be had. Yes, plenty of goop. That's the big thing that you missed. You missed the goop, and also the, the Ligma got pre-banned. That was crazy. That was insane, yeah. actually. <laughs> this is Brazil. Yeah, seriously. Salve Brazil. Here we go. Lana versus True Whale. We're going into the tiebreaker match. Pre-band's getting locked in right here with Lana and True Whale. See what happens. We'll see. I'm expecting a lower um, widget. Pre-band still. I Bane think widget says, still belongs in a pre-band. Bane asks if we talked about the shirts beforehand <laughs> or if it's a coincidence. This is, believe it or not, fully a, co a coincidence. <laughs> yep, yeah, it really was. Not planned. <laughs> it was not planned. Oh, oh Chung Pung and a Shizuka. Interesting. I guess Lana was first picking the, the Shizuka. So, makes sense. He was favoring that one. <laughs> I love chat right now. Chat's got great energy. <laughs> you guys are great. Our awesome. first pick from True Will, that is wild. Yeah. We haven't Quick seen CR first pick since since 20, 2018, right? The goop. CR first pick, dude. The goop's CR back. Why is... is the goop back? Oh, you know what? The goop's back in a good place. Okay, this is this is fine for mm -hmm. Goopy to come in here. We've got three instances of of healing, so I think we're I think we're good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty of healing here to justify some goop. He's not. I, I don't think we've seen True Whale used. We haven't seen True Whale bring out the wedge at, have we? Well, I feel like the Nikki is like one of the first legitimately LD Nat fives that True Whale's even brought to the table today. <laughs> it's all been regular element units. I can't it's remember true, something else. Been. Oh, Laura! Laura was uh, what one of his LDs that he's, he's actively picked. Wow, Laura Nikki! So what great units to uh, bring to the table. Totally. Let's see what Lana answers with taking every second possible to figure out the perfect last pick. I don't even know what I would want from here, to be honest. I love uh, it. The Smicer? Smicer be Smicing, dude, and I think this is an excellent last pick. This is the unit that you and I have been wanting to see the whole tournament, I think, actually. I find this unit so fun to play with, not play against. Uh, so for me, I love playing against a Smicer because we just say may this and um, Smicer just feeds yeah, us with the silences. Uh, so I love a Smicer, but I also love playing a Smicer as well. He does come off as an RNG unit. You can't guarantee the strips. You can't guarantee the silences. Um, sometimes right. he's taking turns, violent procking, just nothing's happening. But um, I, he's very, very fun when, when things go your way. It's true. Sometimes that happens with those big on accuracy resistance units he has a lot of things that are banking on those two stats so it can feel pretty bad when nothing happens but like he's he is absolutely oppressive generally speaking strip and buff block going out there it's the one opportunity where juno does not fully cleanse herself which is really interesting yep let's see what uh true is going to be focusing on here and it is going to be smicer that's one of the units that he doesn't want to have to to deal with Absolutely. Oh, Bane in chat, he's saying, what a crazy summit with the two Doki Doki Lords and all three puppeteers. I encourage you, after the tournament is over, you got to go back and watch True Whale's earlier games. He picked a Varamos and a Gopsu, which is crazy, because that's a, like, that's a almost farmable, almost fully farmable team. Yeah, that was great. very, very cool to see. Bomb landing on top of the 
uh, um, the Nikki. I don't believe this Nikki's on, on max resistance. I feel like we're running so much stats and additional damage on Nikki that there's no time for max res. Exactly. There's no time for it. We got other things to worry about, other places to be. Everyone has some form of control on them. On True Whale's side, Lana's doing a really good job dominating the board right now. Yep, I think Lana's in full control right now. Uh, True Whale definitely struggling to keep himself in this match here. Um, you know, those silences, man. The, the smicer be smicing, dude. The puppeteers are, are not working to the effectiveness that True Whale wants them to. They haven't really hold their weight these games. I kind of prefer the full bruise play style instead of this sort of hybrid pick. Uh, I think maybe moving forward he needs to commit one way or the other. Yeah, most definitely. Um, oh man, I like I keep looking at everything Lana's got and it's just it's a problem for your true All these problem units are uh, problematic units will definitely gonna be an issue for a true to try to come back in this match here. I know no units have dropped uh, but you could just you could just see it. Exactly, and also Smicer's passive still activating while he's controlled too is great. He got a little pushback and silence on the Zima, so even when he gets his turn, nothing's going to come of it. That that's actually why the Smice is so good because you could have full control over Smicer, but if Smicer's stunned up, it still gets a turn. The strip silence can still happen. Yeah. Oh. And even when they proc, they're still silenced for a turn. Here we go. Oh, does he this give it is the chance. Does he, will. he give that to Nikki? And then Nikki's got skills? Does Nikki have skills? Go for the sleep. Go for the sleep on her. Oh? He's got to go for the immunities for, for Nikki's uh, third skills to stop the heal blocks. Yep, there oh, it is. Immunity yes, comes he out. He did it. He's going for the AoE stun. Oh, he didn't have third. Oh, I was wrong. Wow. No, it's all good. Don't worry. Uh, quite a bit of time has passed. Yeah, these, so she these doesn't units are going to start absolutely have skill three. slamming soon. Nikki does have everything online right now, so here comes a good stun. That's the one you want to land. That's awesome. No bomb either. True Whale's going to... It's going to take a miracle for him right now. Uh-oh. There it is. He's got to go for is it. Is that a Heal miracle? coming out here as well. Let's see the damage numbers. 2.8, almost 3k per. Smicer is pretty much going to be dead here. Strip and buff block. Smicer does die. Big skill too with attack buff. He's going to take out the Juno. That might have been the miracle that he needed. Oh no, he went for uh, watery goop instead. Watery goop. A little bit of sustain coming out of both these uh, puppeteers with the first skills. Has cleanse. True will take in round one away from Lana. When I thought Lana had the control for Turn so long. Turn it around. I tell you, an armed Nikki is so dangerous. Like that, having skills, getting the turn with the attack buff, AoE damage, that was crazy. Yep. Yeah, it really was. Prevents from last time, Chung Pung and uh, Shizuka. Now available. See what the pick if we know what Lana's if we know Lana's history, which we do, that Shizuka is probably going to appear pretty early in the draft. Yes, I believe so. Nikki rightfully pre banned Viva Chill as well. Viva Chill definitely posing a bit of an issue. See what Lana's going to be first picking now as we get into this match. Potentially that Shizuka. Yeah, I'm with you. In Importunity, I, I I was fully anticipating the true whale was going to be taking taking the loss on that one. Good on him. He's he is a strong player. I mean, he's got the highest rank here. He's he's the one with the legend tournament win, number one. Yep, the only player to uh well both Thompson and, and True have made it to uh, a final in SWC. So that's true. Yeah. Both players have gone very, very far. America's Cup champions. Yep. I love it when Shizuka players lock down the Juno pretty early too because she's such a great answer to Shizuka. So if you can pick her on your team and deny them that that counter pick, it's usually great. Masha, solid answer. We've seen her come out in response to a lot of Junos tonight too. So True Whale looking pretty steady right now. I don't know what Lana's got planned with this Jameer. Yeah, it's a very quick response with the Masha, and I do agree with that. Looking really, really nice, especially with Jemire on the field right now. Um, 
Masha keeps up the immunity, which is super nice for Shizuka's third skill. Masha fits just fine in this draft. Lana taking up the time right now. Going with two... I don't want to call them both solo units. They both have that kind of potential. Both definitely bruisers, though. Definitely. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Well, True Whale wants to lock down early. Get some control in. Get a clutch little snipe. He could. He's thinking about it. Still going for the snipe. Oh, we're seeing a Camilla ban then. I feel like if we're getting a Sonya through, the Camilla is definitely going to get banned out. Yeah, the so the the Sonya is probably soaking the ban too. I, unless I don't think Lana can take it. There you go. In the Minato. Yeah, Sonya's gonna get banned. Minato gets the ban and not the uh, Camilla. Wow. I think it's a yeah. it's a pick your poison type of situation. He might have known since Sonya was gonna be soaking up the ban, he'd have a harder time against against the Minato long term than the Camilla. Could be. Here we go. Ashir yeah. probably taking turn one. That is exactly the case. Here we get a full team strip with the despair stun sitting on top of this Jamire. Another despair stun. It's despair Chung Pung. Getting this could be a dead unit. Has oh, to be a dead goodness. unit. Takes care of that unit. Uh, the Jamire is going to be dropping very cleanly, might I add. No, oh, true whale. Just clapping, clapping right back again. Yep, this is actually the play style that True Will wants to be in. He wants to be in this full control, not in the situation he was he was in before. Uh, I like situations more... where he's last picking a goop. This is definitely yeah. more his pace right now. It, exactly, exactly. Yeah, ex this is how this is how we've seen True Will play a lot of his summoners' war career. You know, he likes to favor those turn one comps that make you play at a deficit early. Okay. Exactly what he did here. Now it's going to be hard yeah, not not to come back, but. I get not scooping. You don't scoop in a tournament tournament format, just in case. Yeah, I think some people would think a Camilla is going to be able to hold on to this one, but I don't think so. Keep in mind, escher has got that third skill. All the additional damage deals so much damage from, from Escher. Also, there's the sustain as well. So you can see Lana's trying to get rid of that Water Ryu, but you know, getting rid of the Water Ryu, is, it's a must, but keep in mind, Escher is going to be a massive problem. Yeah, the source of healing is pretty solid. Gets the glance. Let's see how well these units hold up against these two water units. Holding the, holding the fort. Get the illusion of time. This is always a cute combo. There's not a whole lot to yield from it this time, unfortunately. You can get all things back, but we're not going to be able to land anything on the Masha, which is kind of one of the pain points for us right now. Yep. Big second skill goes out onto the Escher. You can see Escher handled that so well. Still looking super healthy. Might be one of those moments where you may want to, maybe wanted to capitalize on the defense break too. Well, you could. Yep, he needs to land this freeze. It's a freeze and the slow just return comes out. Nice. There, there's a world Camilla holds on to this. There really is. There is. There is. And you don't even have to be ruined on triple optimism to, to think that either. Like this. Oh, there you Holy go. Holy crit coming from Masha. Double <laughs> crit. All right. Something you there's just feel. There's a third skill. Sometimes you just know when you're gonna do that. There's a couple units floating around in the meta right now that just kind of have that like elemental king passive baked in them somewhere, and Mosh is one of them. Great job, True Whale, with the 2-0 right there in the bottom bracket. That's crazy, man. Well done, well done, True Whale. Um, turned around. Okay, I really, really like True Whale in that second round there. Um, much better. I think that's a play style he needs to capitalize, and you know. He knows. He knows what he's doing. He knows. What he's doing. I don't know where that gap soup came. That was definitely a misclick or a misplay or just like a, a random thought that didn't need to happen. But um, much better play style. Uh, well done, Lana. Lana earned five points. Those are Summoner's points. He's going to be carrying those throughout the summit. True Will got his six points. He'll be carrying those throughout the summit as well. We still have one more match here to, to get into. Yeah, and then after that, the first of the monthly trials will be completed. And uh, as part of the 2024 America's Summit, we're still going to be having more monthly trials ahead of us until we meet in Los Angeles in person. And these summoner points are going to be carried by these players, and they'll be able to keep accumulating more points as they go. And if you want to participate, it's not too late. You can jump into the America's Summit yourself. Topa V versus Zazos in the winner's bracket here, Stoic. This will be an exciting way to conclude the tournament. Yep, it really is. We have our, uh, I want to say our Latin American king right now, Zezas. He did so well last year, and here he is doing very well right now. And Topa V, 
you know, I said I was a big fan. I still am a big fan and will forever be a big fan of Topa V. So I'd love to see him doing so well. I'd love to see him in the summit. And he's doing amazing right now, accumulating a lot of points here in this monthly trial. Let's see if he can accumulate just a little bit more. He's got a super important match here to go up against uh, Zezus. Oh my goodness, the free bands. Here we go, guys. This is the finals right now. Topa V versus Zezos. Best of three, just like the rest of them. We got this. <laughs> North America versus Brazil. Yep. Oh my god, that's the first pick from Topa V. Alright, well let's 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 just jump right into it. Uh, that's a interesting first pick here. Yeah, it is. People have been really enjoying that unit this tournament, though, so I get it. Zezos opting for the Oliver instead. Going elemental advantage, getting some control. Really good against the Jongnam, actually. Yep, Oliver and Sekhmet. 33 with a very fast unit. Zezos is definitely claiming uh, turn one is uh, is going to be his here. And I feel like the Masha doesn't say we're, we're going to compete with turn one. No, we're not competing with turn one with Topa V anymore. It's going to be a Masha and a Rakuni. Love the Wusa. Wusa has been kind of a, a thorn in the side of these Mashas uh, for the tournament today. We've actually seen him pop off just a couple times. Pop off in the way that Wusas pop off, which is just successfully protecting your team. Yep. Uh, Miles and Wusa. Not yet wrapping up the draft says this, but it's definitely something Topi's got to be worried about. That's a lot of fire. You got to be very careful with that because there's already two water units on the other side of the field. He can just drop in another water unit uh, and says this, it can honestly really take advantage of uh, Topi or bring in high volatility um, uh, 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 Federica. This smells like a potentially a Masha t takeout or maybe what are you, what are you feeling? What do you think Topi is going to be losing? Uh, potentially the jog. Oh, oh, okay. I was gonna say the uh, water, water, water goop. Whatever his name is. The the damn jog nam. Him. Yeah, <laughs> jog him. Nam, jog nam. Yeah, him. But I uh, know he's he's gonna get him in this round, Bye, which is tough you. because we've got Wusta immunity. The Wusta immunity is gonna make it very very difficult for that unit to to thrive. Yeah, it is already significant damage going out on the water goop. Segment, third skill available, looking for a reset. Oh, wow, with reset on the June, I was actually expecting to see a re Well, you know what? That's the Dude, right place. That's definitely the right It was the right play. The reset, Look at not. that. Yeah. You're so right, man. That was the right play. Because that gives Wusa the moment to, to open up his uh, his third skill. I think I think you just want to get that. Exactly. You want to get that second skill for Juno back online as fast as humanly possible. So you're cycling attack bar, giving turns with Rakuni. There's still time to strip. Get some damage in on the segment while you can. And he is quick to reduce or increase oh. the cooldown time of that Juno. Yep, big damage. Going in for additional damage as well. He's really trying to get rid of that Juno as soon as possible. Second skill's coming out there, and it is going to be enough with the additional turn. Honestly, I think that's the nail in the coffin in this round one right here. How do you stop the Wusa? I don't know. I'm telling like, the Wusa has been really good this this whole tournament. Actually, usually. It's been picked with only one strip on the other side, or or no strips was the last time we saw it really, uh, really impact. Like, Zazos has been picking so skillfully today, and he's also been playing really patiently. I, I loved, I love the way that he stopped, and he's like, I need to reset this Juno so that way my Wusa can get this third skill off. Just thinking one or two steps ahead always, you know. Yeah, that was the big takeaway for Zazos last year was his drafting was super, super clean, and he played so well last year. Um, and we knew he was definitely going to be a huge threat going into uh, uh, part two, or, or I guess season two of, of the summit this year. So definitely doing well. To no surprise to see him doing well up against a player that we know so well of uh, is Topavi. Zazos the GOAT. So true. We got a lot of Zazos hype in chat right now. And rightfully so. Zazos has been killing it. Yep, he really has been. Uh, I don't see Masha Rakuni doing much more here no, uh, it's definitely going to be a miles was a problem and there you have it zezas with the round one victory over top v keep in mind this is just a best of three guys this is not a best of five vibe brazil and noise shatch let's go let's get okay round number two round number two game point for zezas right now this could be the last game of the day if Zazos keeps this up. 
I feel like Topavi might be pre-banning out the Frederica, um, the Fire Cassandra. I don't. I, I just feel like that is something that he, he's struggling with right now. I know he got to draft it in that second round. Um, I'm pretty sure he drafted in the second round. But I feel like it's just something always on his mind right now. Miles is going to get the ban. Wow. Did not think of Miles is going to get the ban here. Yeah, it's been the... It he did some pretty serious damage to that Jongnam straight out the gate, and it's like, this has uh, been a PTSD kind of pre-banning type of day, rather than uh, thinking what they might be pivoting to type of day. Cigar, he's a pretty solid first pick. Curious if he says it's going to hit a um, Vanessa or a Chandra in his draft here. Oliver Sekhmet coming to the table here. There's the Chandra and the Masha as well. This is almost, they're kind of doing the paint by numbers bit right now. You know, we're representing a lot of different elements and they're picking pretty quickly. This is the first one that's actually taken some consideration from Topa, grabbing that Jongnam. Been really popular yeah, today, man. coming in, I think Wooster comes back. I think I think Wooster comes back for Zizas as the last pick. Could be wrong, but. Congrats to their Godani on the first LD5. What'd you get? And a chroma. Kuni a chroma wrapping of Zez's draft. Oh, mm. so we've got we've just I don't know. It's just for Kuni. It's yeah, it's just for Kuni. I don't know how I feel about the the, the gap goop. Yes, yeah, just the Rakuni. It might be a bit of an over evaluation of the gap goop right now. All right, Ban's coming out on Cigar, right? Controls the, uh, okay, Ban's out the, uh, the Masha, Ban's out, uh, main damage. A Chroma's gonna bring, uh, provide plenty of damage, for sure. Clearly, Zazos really valued that one, though, so he, he sniped it out with the Ban, you know, and it provides a second instance of that skill, too. Uh, and the skill, too, is quite valuable. Yep, nice reset, though, going out onto Cigar. I think we're still gonna see us. Oh, goes for a second skill. Steals the buff. Oh, notably resisted the increased good. cooldown time. Yep. Who are we hugging here? We're hugging the cigar. I think we have to hug the cigar. That's where the attention for Oliver is going to go. Oh. Oh. All right. Yeah, might have been a slight misevaluation because right now Cigar could get denied his skills if he's so inclined. Could get you know he's he's gonna be just like like you said like Oliver is gonna stay on that cigar basically like he's not yeah, gonna get an opportunity to use anything. Well, the provokes are definitely a big problem. Um, if Cigar was provoking a bunch of units, uh, it kind of helps with the hug sitting on top of him as well though. Do that. Can you get a no stun through it? Watch out for Oliver. He's gonna be coming back in a little bit. He's got to keep controlling him. Yep. Exactly. I Third love skill can go the maybe the Chandra. I, I gonna double go onto the are, yeah. are just my my favorite stoic. I really like playing them. It reminds me of like blue white control and MTG. Like that's I think that's kind of why oh, I grabbed this word that playstyle. I know that that's like so so toxic to your ears, Ugh. but I, I love. That. Yeah, if you can sleep at night, that's cool. <laughs> if I can sleep at night like that, we're good. <laughs> Oh, man. And now look at this. We're starting to feel the... We're really starting to feel the impact of the no hug on the cigar. He's he's on his way out. Yeah, I really thought that's where that hug was going to be going. Uh, interesting enough. But hey, it's looking really good for Topa V right now. Nice little additional turn. He's going to have skills, all skills up uh, next turn for sure. But I think he's going to be dropping his uh, his cigar here. You got to take that unit. And then we're working back on Camilla. Oh, uh, Camilla. Jeez. Um, Raccoon. Oh, Neither. No, I know. I was way off. I was way off. <laughs> Don't worry, dude. It's been a long tournament. I'm getting pretty hungry, too. I'm very hungry. A uh, little bit of damage coming towards the, the Raccoon. Raccoon is definitely going to be uh, wrapped up. Not not too soon. Pretty soon, though, I think. Reduce the attack bar of that Chandra. Get the resets there. Wonderful. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. <laughs> what a comparison. <laughs> yeah, Topo's, Topo's sitting pretty right now. Um, and then also, I think... Oh wow, that proc is gonna is gonna keep him keep him around and get rid of that unit. Let's see how much damage the Acroma Ooh, can do. Big is... damage from the Acroma. Does Acroma turn this around? Acroma absolutely could, especially if she can either increase the cooldown time or if she can actually just get the silence 
on Ragdoll, rather. She can just get the silence on Ragdoll to deny him the ignore defense torrent. A Chroma could take this back. Well, the reset's got to go on top of the Chandra. Stop that guy from getting any skills here. He's going to remain giving that unit attention. Okay. And then we just, we skill one with Ragdoll. All right. Then you go for the multipliers. You use skill two, skill three. Is that going to... Oh, he did get the silence. This is the situation. Yeah, for two turns. Oh, but it doesn't matter. Topa V taking round two from Zezas. We're going to a round three in the finals. This is exactly what we wanted. We got Topa V from North America. We got Zezas from Brazil. This is the first monthly trial finals that I was hoping for, to be honest. What a great way to kick off these monthlies for the America Summit. Like, I, this is so stellar. Yeah, for sure. This has been an excellent tournament today. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Love to see so many people showcase what they did here, all the different ranks of and whatnot in the summit. It was it's exactly what the summit was supposed to be, uh, bringing all these players together of all sorts of uh, colors. Exactly. Here we go. We got Masha. We got Ragdoll in the pre-band zone, right where he belongs. Yeah. Although right I know where every he belongs. Time, every time we stream together, you're always like buff Ragdoll. Not seriously, though, but, you know. Well, maybe yeah, a little. I mean, to be honest, it, I I would never say buff Ragdoll. I just think Ragdoll has his place. That's all. You're right. You're right. You you say it in jest, but there is definitely a yep. moment to pick Ragdoll, and it hasn't. It's not right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I feel like even for like the play style of um, uh, Zezas, like I feel like I wouldn't care too much about. It's about Ragdoll. But then again, it just takes one crit up in G3 where rune qualities are so much closer together that that 10% does become a lot more impactful. Raul's Law and Chess saying a Chroma always disappointing. There is a there is a point where a Chroma has been pretty good tonight, actually. We've seen, I, but I, I know that feeling. I think we've gotten to the point where, you know, Camilla is definitely optimal and a Chroma has kind of fallen by the wayside. She's always been a bit of a wall, though. Yep, definitely. Fire Monk like King, I do like the Fire Monk King. This is a unit that's totally justified when you have an Ethna on the field. Um, Tessarian, interesting. Uh, not bad, definitely not bad. We've got a um, Rakuni. We've, we've got plenty of things to bring the Tessarian into. I was feeling a Masha, to be honest with you. I thought Masha was going to be a little bit more appropriate when we have a uh, the, the Water Kevy Lord and Oliver. Kind of wanted to see a Masha in this case. Well, we got but the Masha, in the, we got totally the Masha in the pre band this round. Oh, Masha in the pre band. Look at that. I missed that. Not, not a problem. It's been, we know it's been, been exactly. some time. Frankly, I'm seven. <laughs> dude, to your credit, she would have been great. And that's why we pre banded yeah, To your credit, she would have been yeah. perfect here. <laughs> so that's why, that's why she's in the pre band. That's good. That's really good. Let's see what happens. Really... Second's kicking us off right now. Look for a reset potentially on the Oliver. Does land it. Got the defense break on the Meho Wang of all things. I know. That's like where it's not supposed to go, but it's fine. Totally fine. Uh, Verity Heal is going to be there to pump a little bit of damage in there. Oh, yep. Get some damage in. Rakuni's going to cleanse up that defense break but after Chandra goes I don't think that's going to be so impactful but I think oh it brought him down to like 60 percent he's getting a lot of mileage out of this defense break actually the the way that this has has ended up he, that was actually kind of unfortunate for Topa V yeah definitely here let's see this additional damage he's got to put this into the Ethna Ethna's gotta go that defend is coming out onto the Ethna though trying to protect him let's see if the despair stun pops out here from the Chandra I need to build a, a Chandra. Of towards the it, I, he interacts so well with all these monsters, and I'm picking a lot of these monsters. I need to build one. Not to make this about me, but, you know, I, I want to <laughs> I want to build a Chandra. Well, I thought the Rakuni was going to be a little bit more difficult to remove from the field, but I think Zezaz did his way with the Rakuni, because Rakuni is going to be dropping shortly. Oliver with glancing on him. We're not going to see too much happen from that third. A little bit of attack more pushback there. Okay. Cute, cute little hit. And he's kind of in a position where he's just got to take down the Rakuni maybe with the uh, with the bird on bird's turn. Yeah, he's definitely going to take out the, uh, still not going for it. I guess he's going to be pushing his units in front so he's not too worried about it. Someone's going to do away with the Rakuni Dude, before anybody else this has is a turn. what I'm talking about. So patient. He's so patient, man. He's, Zezos is 
staying so level-headed. You know, you can tell he's really comfortable in this environment. And a lot of players aren't that comfortable playing in tournament settings, but Zezos is clearly right at home, and that's super admirable. Yeah, most definitely. I think he really needed that stun on top of the Sekhmet. Third skill's coming out, getting a reset here, almost killing the Oliver, but this should get it right here. He's got to use the third skill, slows down. Gets the despair stun. How is that Oliver still alive? I don't know. I don't know. There he goes, finally. Feels like maybe three turns too long. We'll stick around with the Meiho Wang, but the slow hurts. Yep. Uh, the Fire Monkey King has the ability to, to solo. There, There is a world here that Fire Monkey King does solo. He does come off as an elemental king, so we don't worry too much about the uh, uh, the Chandra here. But I think getting rid of the, uh, as crazy as it sounds, getting rid of the segment, really, really important. Not when a hug is sitting on him from the, uh, the Chandra. Because uh, you need to get that second skill up so you're able to heal. But the birdie heal is causing so much laughing. So much consideration from Topa right now. He was debating using skill 2 on Juno to kind of go for the desperation, despair. Uh, and then he was thinking about if he should hold on to the second skill. I agree that he should hold on to the second skill here with Meiho Wang. Now's, now would have been the time to use it because he needs to heal. Unfortunately, it's no dice. Nope. Beautiful revenges here. Gets the defense break. That's going to be it right there. Zeza finishing off Topa V. Oh, and also claiming first place. First place. Oh, what a journey for him. He's going to be at the leader's board right now for having the most summoner's points uh, you can have at the moment in the summit. So well done, Zezas. He played phenomenally. Topa V still played incredible to, to get as far as he did. Everybody's going to have these points, and it's all going to be pushing onto the following month. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Zezos has gotten a huge point advantage with this. And so, again, everyone at home, keep track of the America's Summit because this is just the first step towards Los Angeles in person for the finals. We'll have another monthly trial next month after people have taken some time to farm some more points and wins in those goodwill lobbies that have been opening on Wednesdays. There you go. We got the confirmed leaderboard stoic. Look at that. Zezos sitting right at the top with eight points. Yep, and followed up by Topa V, Truewell, Lana Thompson, Zelda, Lightning, and Crocodile. All these guys were able to accumulate some points. And like we said, it's going to push over to the following week where everybody is going to be doing it all over again. So every Wednesday, it's going to be coming again with the Summit. People are going to be joining that lobby, doing what they can to accumulate their wins to then make it to the following monthly trial. What a great first tournament. What a great first tournament. Love it. Guys, chat. Chat, thank you so much for joining us for this first monthly trial. We really appreciate you guys. And Stoic, it's always a pleasure getting to do these things with you, man. It is always a great time, Evan. I had a blast here. I look forward to our next meet. We'll be here. Uh, actually, we're going to be in the Copter stream tomorrow talking more about uh, Summit. Yeah, actually. So, folks, if you enjoyed this sort of thing, we are we do a stream on Friday on the Come To Us channel, right where you're watching it on Twitch and YouTube. And you can come right back here. And Stoic and I are going to be talking about these games. Thank you all so much for the game. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us. It's been a lovely time. Have a great day. Hopefully, we'll see you tomorrow on stream. Bye-bye, everybody.